Zetsu Zetsu still remembers the finer details when he was born, down to the seconds, one of the gifts his mother had given him to complete his mission. From the day he was born all the necessary knowledge has been given to him by his mother, language, chakra, knowledge, and more importantly his mission. A mission even his mother seems to doubt will ever work, a mission to free her. He still remembers the feeling when he gains conscience, the feeling when he sees flat lands, forests, and even mountains being uprooted from their core forming a large spheroid made him in awe of the one who can use such a powerful sealing jutsu and conflicted knowing who's in the receiving end of it. The jutsu made her mother's large avatar the ten tails, to be covered up until he can only see a single eye at the last second. For Zetsu, the day he met his mother is the last day he met her. Mere minutes after he was born he sees his mother being sealed, the one that had given him a body and a soul sealed away inside a sealing jutsu. Tearing the land for it to feed, floating to the heavens becoming a giant seal stone what the humans now call the moon. Anger, sadness, and confusion dominated him when he was born. But all of that was overridden when he sees the two people that have sealed his mother, the instinct of survival quickly takes hold of his body, as he quickly slithers away into the earth hiding and biding his time to take revenge. Hagoromo, Hamura, how can you two betray your mother? My mother, he muttered to himself with a voice so small and frail. His brothers are the ones responsible for the fate of Kagaya Otsutsuki, the two of them rebelled against their mother's reign, destroying all the works she made for peace just because both of them wanted to protect the inferior creature called humans. Idiots, both of them are idiots. How can they betray their mother for such a worthless being that is barely categorized as a creature with sapience? Don't they understand that without her, all of those monkeys will get back to killing each other? Now without her, the humans have lost the only reason why they have stopped killing their kind. She alone with her might have made these humans cease their disgusting and barbaric act called war, with her overwhelming strength, stopping war before there was even a spark to ignite it. Their act angered him no, enraged him. How can his brothers betray her without thinking of any effective system to replace the one his mother has made? Instead, using idealism alone to keep the peace. He has seen the eldest of the brothers Hagoromo, spreading his mother chakra to these humans, as if it was his, to begin with. Distributing her divine power even to the lowliest of scum. Oh, how her mother would rage seeing what happens to her precious chakra. Trusting them with the power he has given to not be used as a tool to kill each other. What a fool, doesn't he realize that these humans will continue to kill each other after the thing he has been teaching is forgotten. His naivety infuriated him knowing his mother was removed because of such foolish naivety. The youngest of the siblings, Hamura instead chooses to guard her mother bringing his followers with him. His reasoning is he wants to be close to her. While the brothers are doing what they think about how to achieve world peace, Zetsu was trying to find a way to revive her. The problem is Zetsu needs the chakra of the nine-tailed beast and the chakra of either Hagoromo or Hamura. The option of using Hamura's chakra is eliminated, due to the distance that Zetsu needs to reach him. Now Zetsu only has the option of using the chakra that Hagoromo has to revive her. Easier said than done between the brothers, Hagoromo is the most powerful. But then Hagoromo made a family. The mother of the family is unimportant. What is important is the two sons he has, the two of them are brimming with the chakra their father has. Unfortunately, those chakras are split with the eldest inheriting the yin chakra and the youngest inheriting the yang chakra. Most creatures would give up at this point, but Zetsu, he's not most people. Rather than despairing and cursing his luck for seeing the chakra separated, he sees an opportunity. The two boys are named Indra and Ashura, Indra is the oldest of the two while Ashura is the youngest. Indra is talented while Ashura endures in mediocrity. Everyone thinks that Indra would be his father's successor because of how talented he is, but Hagoromo chose his youngest son to be his heir, he reasons that Ashura has more compassion than Indra who is mad with power. When it was announced who Hagoromo's successor was, jealousy swelled inside Indra. Zetsu of course only needs to push him in the right direction. Zetsu, promising him power, manipulates Indra to attack his brothers and father, effectively bringing a civil war between the ones that supported Ashura the Senju and the ones that supported Indra the Uchiha. The battle between love and connection versus power and hatred. Their battle is so intense that both Ashura and Indra promised both of their fathers to reincarnate into their descendants, effectively making a cycle of war between the two groups. 
Zetsu has seen that cycle repeated over a thousand times. Each cycle he hoped that the reincarnation of Indra won the battle, but each cycle those hopes were crushed whenever the reincarnation of Ashura defeated him. The closest reincarnation of Indra that was almost victorious against Ashura's reincarnation is Madara but even he was defeated by Hashirama Senju the reincarnation of Ashura. But when he saw that Madara survived the final battle against Hashirama he knew this was the only chance he had. But yet again he was disappointed, Madara is not the man he used to be. Instead, have this overly elaborate and frankly stupid plan yet he endures grumbling that Madara is his only chance to revive her. Then a miracle occurred Madara had managed to combine his chakra with an Uchiha with a chakra from a Senju, Hashirama Senju Chakra. For thousands of years, Zetsu did not only manipulate the world to do his bidding but also amassed knowledge for his own. The thing that Madara has accomplished is a miracle, he has never seen something like it even in his long life. So he stole a sample and formed a new plan. And finally, after untold years, I got to see my mother. Would she welcome me as her son or her tool? It doesn't matter, I finally get to see the face of my creator. For hundreds of cycles, my plan to revive her has come to fruition. All I need is not a reincarnation of a failed son to win, but an amalgamation of DNA and chakra. For years in what these humans called the Third Shinobi World War, I've been collecting the chakra of the Bijus. I only need a small part of it. Each of these chakra samples is hard to acquire, especially that damn Eight Tails Jinchuriki. The Nine Tails were the last to acquire as Konoha has never used the beast's power to win their war, which annoys him to no end as he can't get the last piece of the puzzle until now. Roar. The scream that contains power. Nine Tails taking him out is relatively easy. Obito has done a marvelous job. Now I just need a sample of the last piece of the Divine Three. The beast is now screaming inside a forest after being driven out by the third Hokage giant staff and now charging his biju bomb but stopped when he sensed my presence. What are you doing here, creature? He growled but then a face of recognition could be seen from him. What are you? Hello, Kurama. We've finally met. I am your uncle, but that is unimportant. I leap forward in my liquid form dodging attacks from the beast. Seeing my chance I immediately took some of the nine tails chakras. Thank you for the food my little nephew and goodbye. A giant toad suddenly stepped on the beast. Trying not to get detected by the surprisingly powerful Hokage, Zetsu opted to travel you. Enderground to his destination, the Hokage Mountain. He laughed maniacally as he finally accomplished his mission, finally, his endless journey ended, and Kagaya Atsusuki was revived. Remember this world, be gleeful that your pathetic life will be used by mother as her food, and let the earth be the table of her banquet. Hear me world, for you would witness the true meaning of power. Every tailed beast chakra I've collected is merged into one giant ball of glowing golden chakra and infuses the DNA of Hashirama and Madara, but Zetsu forgets about one big mistake. He is too weak to hold it. Sure his mother has made him powerful enough to defeat a ninja in the caliber of Hyjanin yet even that was not enough to contain the power he was holding. No. The ball of chakra dissipates slowly while fluctuating as the mass of energy is becoming unstable. Panic struck Zetsu. No. And exploded with a trail of chakra mirroring and Aurora moved into a hospital. Mother. He tried to chase the chakra but he sensed someone is trying to find him with a heavy heart he slithers away again into the earth believing that his effort to revive her mother had failed. I've been waiting for thousands of years, damn it. I was closed. It seems the plan Madara made is my only choice. Wait for me mother, I will bring you back. While Zetsu escaped from the village inside a hospital a woman is being carried to the emergency room. She was pregnant but the doctor said the baby would be delivered next month. Confusion can be seen in the mother when her water breaks. Her husband is still helping other people to evacuate even if he's not a shinobi. She was proud to know that she has such a brave husband, but now he wanted to strangle him because he left her. Keep pushing ma'am, keep pushing. A nurse is trying to help the lady giving birth. Why now? The hospital is hectic as injured people from the Kyubi attack are being treated. The nurse thought and cursed silently inside her mind. The woman in the hospital bed screamed in agony and the nurse can only hope that the delivery is smooth. Keep pushing ma'am, I'm seeing her head. For hours the woman is still in the middle of giving birth. She heard a man screaming calling the woman in the bed. He seems to be struggling to try to make his way here. Out of my way, 
My wife is giving birth. I need to see her. Haruna. Hold on. He screamed from outside the door. Calm down sir. Your wife is going to be okay and will call you when the process is done. The man calmed down and stopped banging on the door when he heard one of her co-workers try to calm him down. Ah. When the woman named Haruna screamed again, the banging of the door resumed. Haruna. I'm coming. Honey. The door was banged again by the man. Sir. Calm down. Sir. Overall the scene outside must be eventful. The noise of the people outside seemed irrelevant when a beautiful sound was heard. The baby was beautiful black haired with a tinge of white on the stems, and her skin so pale as a pearl. A new life has been born into this earth. When the nurse was about to give the baby to the woman she heard the door open revealing the man that had made a ruckus at the hospital. The man wanted to say something but he wisely waited for the mother to see the baby first. What's the name, ma'am? She said while showing the baby's face to the woman, Kagaya, her name is Kagaya, the woman said in motion to the man standing at the door to come closer. The man seeing this came closer to the bed and sported the most brilliant of smiles. Are you okay, Haruna? The man said, I'm okay Haruki. The two of them said lovingly only to freeze when they saw the eye of the baby. The right side of her eye is black while the left side is white commonly seen in the Hyuga clan. Is this normal? Is there something wrong with my child? The man half screamed, concern can be heard in his voice. It seems your daughter has what is called heterochromia, but I. They never seen such colors before in this kind of case. Seeing the stem of your daughter's hair there's a possible chance that she has albinism but we don't have proof until a proper diagnosis. The nurse tried to calm both of the parents. Their faces seemed to relax a little yet concern still can be felt in both of them. When the nurse tries to tell both to take away the baby so she can put her into the NICU incubator they slightly resist. I'm only going to put her in the incubator. When the woman named Haruna heard her reasoning she let go of her hold. Ellipsis dot dot. Kakashi the entire village is in shambles after the Kayubi escaped from the seal inside Kashina and with the death of Minato, the Hokage of Konoha. People begin to panic and unrest is happening all over the village, Konoha has never been so vulnerable to inside and outside threats. It's been days since the attack happened the village elders which consist of the previous Hokage Serutobi Hiruzen, his teammates Mitokado Homura and Yudatane Kaharu, and Hiruzen's rival Shimura Danzo. Formed an emergency government, with no time assembling the village diet of representatives. The first few couples of days are chaotic, people almost resorting to banditry as they feared that most of the food they had in their home had been destroyed inside their house because of the attack. That fear was unfounded when the elders instructed us to open the village's emergency food supplies. They solved the problem relatively easily. The same can't be said when the other neighboring country's villages. They see an opportunity in the weakened state of Konoha forcing the elders to dispatch most of their greatest fighters to monitor the border trying to prevent any transgression from the other villages and giving a message of strength to the outside world. They have been so busy rebuilding the village that they forget something important. The one that they have promised to protect, the one that they have promised to look after. The son of two of their greatest heroes, a son from their former cage, and the last of the Uzumaki which is almost royalty just like the Senju and the Uchiha. They forget about Naruto Uzumaki. The blonde-haired blue-eyed child is being placed inside an incubator next to a certain baby girl, but that is unimportant, Naruto Uzumaki has been abandoned. Only being guarded by one loyal Anbu who's wearing a mask of a dog, fitting as he's now guarding the village Jinchuriki like a loyal guard dog. His code name is Inu, one of Konoha's greatest assets. His identity is shrouded in mystery as one of Konoha's top Anbu operatives, there's red tape all around him, but the one he knew and loved can instantly guess his identity by just seeing his distinctive posture and grey hair alone. The mysterious figure only has his eyes on the blonde haired child but for some reason, he has this nagging feeling to look at and inspect the other baby beside Naruto. He curbed his desires as he sensed a powerful, large, and familiar chakra. He didn't react knowing the identity of the figure he had detected. When he hears a knock on the window of the incubator room an old man is motioning him to come outside to talk with him. He followed his orders as he is Sarutobi Hiruzen, the acting emergency Hokage of Konoha. How's Naruto, Inu, is there any problem with his health or the seal? The aging page asked. There are no complications with Naruto, Hokage-sama, his health, 
and the strength of the seal is all right, Inu said with a monotone voice. The graying-haired cage nodded stoically. Good, as of for now you'll be relieved of your duty. The dog-masked man moved slightly in the back showing visible dissatisfaction. The reason, Hokage-sama, he asked. We need you as the representative for the Hitaki Council seat as Kakashi, not as Inu. Who will guard Naruto when I'm on the council? My daughter would be the one to replace you. I need you to change to your ceremonial attire, Kakashi. The meeting, G will take two hours. Do you understand? He said in a tone expecting him not to argue about the order. I understand, sir. Hearing Kakashi's confirmation, the cage left him with a teleportation jutsu. The dog-masked man slumped and looked at the sleeping blonde baby then left the hospital toward his house. Konoha is rebuilding, slowly. The damage the Kayubi has caused to the village is catastrophic but thankfully most of the important buildings, the hospital, Anbu headquarters, intelligence building, records building, and food storage are relatively unscathed from the attack. It's one of the main reasons why Konoha can have such a fast and effective response when and after the attack. The same can't be said of the civilian part of the village, most of the damages are concentrated in the merchant district, with many civilian businesses that suffered most from the attack. The Hokage has ordered the grey-haired man to wear proper attire when attending the village diet but he was too lazy and too tired to change to proper attire that he just opted to wear the standard Junin attire. The old man may glare at him later, right now, Kakashi didn't care what the cage would think when he wore the wrong costume to the village diet. Besides, the clothing is a pain in the ass to wear and he's going to sit in a chair listening to people screaming and shouting for hours. It's safe to say that it would be better for his sanity and tired body to just wear something comfortable. The village assembly is located inside the Hokage office as it is the most centralized part of the village. As he makes his way to the location he can see people trying to clear the rubble and rebuild from the attack. People lifting heavy boulders with the help of others or in some cases themselves as there are shinobi helping the rebuilding, wood masons and construction worker building houses are repairing it with their tools, and even the children are helping the village recovery. Kakashi usually would help but he's been summoned to sit in a chair don't get it wrong, he knows that the assembly meeting is important. Kakashi just preferred to help directly with his bare hand. But at last, the universe didn't agree with him. He casts aside that thought when he's approaching the Hokage office. The office itself is shaped like a wedding cake with multiple other bulbs of cake-like structure converging with it and a long hall can be seen extending to the back, red in color of the building, with some long curved pylons made out of concrete bending into the center of the building, a wall surrounding it for protection, and the symbol of fire in the front of it. When he arrived at the front gate of the wall, he was greeted by two ninjas with the rank of Chunin. Hataki San the Hokage, and the rest of the council are waiting for you at the main assembly. One of the Chunin guards said to him. He nodded in response. Entering the front lawn Kakashi can see people running outside and inside the building carrying documents, files, and other things that are too top secret to be described. The scene in front of him is familiar as the same activities were the same when the Third Shinobi World War was still raging on. This is understandable knowing Konoha's precarious situation right now. He walked inside the building and saw more chaos. Some people are even sleeping on the floor. He ignored them and walked at a fast pace as he continuously thanked the gods that he didn't work in the village administration. He spotted a large door made out of metal with an intricate carving of a dragon protecting a giant tree, burning four underscript entities to Chris. The message was clear to all that had seen it. When Kakashi pushed the door he was greeted by the third Hokage's stoic face that promptly transformed into a face of annoyance. Kakashi welcome, it seems you also have disregarded my order to wear formal attire like the others. The aging cage said, annoyed. Others, Kaka. She looks at the other village representative, noticing most of the civilians and shinobi representatives didn't wear formal attire. They seem to be holding their laughter, not at me, but at the newer faces inside the assembly. The Hokage glared at them promptly making the other representative straighten their back. Youngsters this day, disregarding tradition. He muttered to himself. Only can be heard by the other ninjas inside the room. Kakashi found a seat on the shinobi side of the assembly sitting in the middle of the group at the long table. The civilian representative is sitting in front of the shinobi representative, giving Kakashi an acknowledging nod. 
The Hokage and the elders are sitting on top of a podium with the Hokage podium visibly being higher than the elders and representatives. A clear showing of the hierarchy. Order. The sixth emergency meeting of Konoha will be commenced. Inviting the emergency cage, Serutobi Hirazan, to deliver the first words in the assembly. The Konoha elder named Kaharu said while swinging a gavel. Right for the first order businesses, I shall read the letter that the fire daimyo has sent to us immediately after he was told about the attack. Murmurs spread among the assembly. Quiet, the old lady Kaharu said with her gavel. It reads, My condolence to the people of Konoha the attack that the Kayubi have conducted one week ago was unforgivable and as the daimyo of fire country representatives the country as a whole offer my condolences and help. But there is a pressing matter that shall need to be discussed immediately. I Akihito with the power bestowed upon my ancestor the goddess Amaterasu hereby declare the reinstatement of Serutobi Hirazan on his position as Hokage and will be effective immediately. In light of the recent events, the Imperial Palace will donate 10 trillion ryo in donations from the country's emergency fund. We hope with this Konoha will recover and resume its role as the primary military force in the country. Sign Akihito Daimyo of Fire Country. The Hokage read it from an expensive looking paper. As of now, I have been reinstated as acting cage. I was going to refuse, but the daimyo insists it must be to take control of the village knowing that a familiar figure would bring stability in the short run, any objection. None of the representatives from either side will object to the daimyo decision as it is logical even the civilian representatives acknowledge it and see the logic behind such a decision. The reconstruction of Konoha is still underway with most of the effort reaching a bottleneck because of the lack of skilled laborers. Can any of you here provide us with these kinds of laborers? A man from the civilian side stands up and he seems not to wear an informal dress which means he's been in this position for a considerable amount of time. Hokage-sama and the honorable elders permission to speak at the assembly. Permission granted representative, Haruki. The man named Haruhi nodded and started to say his plan. I have a contact in Wave who's a great builder. He has a company that takes large construction contracts at a fairly cheap and competitive price. If I pull some strings maybe I can make him do a large contract for us. The man said accompanied by an agreeing murmur from the assembly. A good proposal representative Haruki, can you guarantee this person's quality in his craft? The Hokage asked. Yes, sir, he said immediately, then the matter of rebuilding the village can be fulfilled for now. Representative Haruki. Will you be the one responsible for contacting this person, will you accept? I'm afraid that is impossible sir my daughter was just born this last week. The man stopped talking when the Hokage put his hand in a stopping gesture. I understand, can you at least tell us after this assembly how to contact him? Yes, sir, good, any question. Dozens of hands both from the shinobi side and the civil, Ian side raised their one hand. Yes, Hiyashi-san. Does the Hayuga clan have some questions? The man named Hiyashi stood up when the Hokage mentioned his name. Yes, Hokage-sama. When the Kayubi attack happened the Hayuga clan noticed that there is a large chakra concentration on top of the Hokage mountain some members even stated that the chakra felt familiar and most of the people said it had faced an enemy Jinchuriki before. Does the village have an answer about this strange event? Hiyashi-san said, that is top secret, we can't divulge the matter. Hiyashi-san nodded and sat back on his chair. Now let's talk about some monetary regulation. A silent groan can be seen from most of the representatives as they bang their heads or hands on the table. This is going to be a long day. Thought Kakashi. Haruna her husband has been away for quite some time now being part of the village assembly has its perks for the family. We have the respect of the others, our family name is well known leading our family business to be regarded with good publicity, and of course the free advertising from the title. But he was always busy with work, which left me to run the family business when he was away. I don't do anything that requires physical labor. No, that would be a disaster. My job mostly consists of being a manager for the other employees in the store. Our business is in the sector of service we provide our customers by helping them in any administration and accounting. It is a new industry that doesn't even have a name yet. We have little competition, as no one in their right mind wants to deal with other people's paperwork. Because of this our business has flourished leading to Haruki gaining a seat in the assembly. The business idea was first proposed by Haruki as he used to work at the village administration, a notorious job because of how mentally exhausting it is. 
My husband has told me the job itself is not hard, it's just that there are just too many security protocols to complete with every file that was completed. Her husband loves doing it for some reason, but Haruki is always weird when it comes to this. He and Minato are such nerds when they discuss something. Kashina, Minato, remembering those names brings sadness to her. She was introduced to Kashina through her husband, they've become friends when both of them are excited about the prospect of having a child. Originally Kagaya was going to be born in the next two months after Naruto is born. She doesn't know the exact date Naruto would be born but Kashina said it was this month. Now knowing what happened to Kashina she would never see that child. If what the village said is true then Kashina and Naruto died mere minutes before Naruto was born. Minutes, it was. A tear started to flow from Haruna's eyes as she remembered the death of her friend. Wah. She wiped her tears and smiled at her child, who is currently in her cradle waking up because of her sadness. It's okay Kagaya sleep mommy is okay. She swings the cradle slowly to make her daughter sleep again. Slowly her daughter closed her eyes and is soundly asleep. She is so small. She thought her daughter Kagaya miraculously doesn't have any health complications because of her premature birth, aside from her eyes and hair Kagaya is a normal healthy baby. The doctor didn't diagnose her daughter with albinism, but mutation. The doctor said because of the overexposure to chakra thanks to the Kyubi and the massive chakra at the Hokage statues her daughter's hair has mutated. He said it wasn't fatal because millions of people have been mutated by chakra overexposure yet there hasn't been any report of any problem with their health. The Haruno family is one of those examples. That put some relief on us about Kagaya. You're going to be a problematic child aren't you Kagaya mommy has a hunch about it. She smiled at her daughter. T-R-R-R-N-G. She rose from her feet and quietly walked to the front door W. Hen she heard the bell ringing. When she opened it her husband was standing half awake and barely standing. Hey Haruna, I'm tired. Can I come in and sleep? He said. Work, work. He said in confirmation, then walked into the house slowly. Don't forget to brush your teeth, Haruna said to him. He only responded with a thumbs up from the back. She watched as her husband walked through the door only to hit his head. Ow! You forgot to open the door, honey. Thanks. When he opened the door, wah, Kagaya screamed. You, I just want some sleep. She sees her husband lump back. Yep, problematic. Ellipsis dot dot. Haruna the office is full of activities, with people carrying stacks of papers are talking to their clients. Many people from individuals and large companies are using our service in their day-to-day -day life. As a result, both of our offices, separated for individuals and companies, are filled with employees doing paperwork and serving clients via phone or eye-to-eye. -eye. Today's just another normal busy day with hundreds of people lining up to be served with our services. Four years after the Kyubi attack, Many people have started outsourcing their paperwork to us, but therein lies the problem. Sure it's great seeing our store having more customers, sure it's great seeing our business expand resulting in us buying a bigger building to accommodate more employees, and sure now we are the top 20 richest civilian families inside Kona. But that's not important damn it. I'm tired. I am currently in the middle of writing another important person's tax return as he's too lazy to write it themselves. Why do people have to be so goddamn lazy with this kind of thing? I grumbled. The reason why so many people have outsourced this kind of thing to us is that as the village rebuilds it becomes a bureaucratic mess because of its rebuilding. People trying to build a house bam there's paperwork for that, a man trying to build a ramen shop bam paperwork, so much redundant paperwork it's honestly infuriating no matter if that fact made us stupidly rich. The village is also relying on it when it comes to paperwork but it's mostly just something trivial like the budget for the organization of the bird watching community. I've just learned that Konoha has a bird watching community. Sometimes this job can be so strange. Putting aside my pen I slept with my face on the desk. The sound of a door opening woke me up seeing my assistant come in. Ma'am, a client wants to talk to you via phone. Ugh, can you tell him or her that I'm sleeping? I said with a muffled voice as my dark hair muffled the sound. I've been working non-stop. I deserve to sleep damn it. I'm afraid we can't ma'am. She gulped. It's Mr. Haruno. He's been angry with customer service and demanded to talk with you. I raised my face immediately to see my assistant. She's wearing a white dress with black long skirts. Standard company uniform. 
I sighed and cleared my throat. Patch him in. This is going to be mental. The phone on top of my desk rang. Taking a deep breath I hesitate slightly before answering and out the telephone on my ear slowly. This is higher management of HH how can I help you? I said with scripted pleasantries. This is Mr. Haruno, is this Mrs. Haruna? The man said with an annoyed voice. What did we do wrong this time? Yes sir, this is Miyatsuko Haruna. Who do I have the pleasure to talk with right now? I said with fake pleasantry. Why me? Why can't it be Haruki? I lamented too much with my misfortune that I didn't notice a black white gremlin had opened my door. Cut the pleasantries. I want to know what happens to the file I've sent to your company. You said you'll finish it as fast as you possibly can. It's been four weeks. When will you finish it? We shouldn't have taken this job. The little figure walks to the right of my side and just stares at me. Yes, Mr. Haruno, the report will be finished next week. I felt a small L hand pulling the right side of my shirt. Make sure your company finishes it next week or I'll demand compensation. I have too much money in the line here. Do you know how hard it is for my company to be trusted by the village to operate outside and inside? The little hand continues to tug my shirt. Yes sir, I'll have most of our employees on your permit and tax returns. Only to be stopped when I flick her forehead. An annoyed small sound can be heard from the right side of my body. Good, I expect my permit and tax return to be ready in the next week. The sound of the telephone shutting down roughly can be heard. I sighed and looked at Kagaya who was holding my shirt with her right arm and another arm holding her forehead while I'm sitting on a chair and a baby bunny on the ground. My baby daughter is all alone playing with her white bunny stuffed animal while looking at me in anticipation. Mama, you said you'll play with me today. She pouted at me with her round baby face and stared with her black and white eyes brimming with excitement. I'm sorry sweetie, but mama is busy today. Kagaya looked down at the floor with a sullen face. But, but you promised. She twiddled her hands and feet disappointed and lonely. How about this when it's dinner, I'll cook your favorite food. How about that, I smiled hoping that this would make her happy. It's okay I get it, you're busy. Seeing that face she makes when either Haruki or I can't play with her made the two of us feel guilty about not playing with her. I and Haruki are suffering from success. We've been so busy with work lately that both of us don't have the time to play with Kegai. People have suggested we hire people to take care of our business or hire someone to look after Kegai. But truthfully both I and my husband don't trust anyone enough with our business let alone Kegai. This leads to where we usually take Kegaya to work so we can look after her. It's a good idea at first glance but seeing her all alone in our offices made it excruciating. Papa, Kegaya said while running through a familiar man's embrace. The man embraced Kegaya and lifted her to the air with his hand holding her armpits. Oof, you're heavy now aren't you, sweetie? The man said with a hearty smile. Papa, I'm not that heavy, she pouted. Haruki and I chuckled when we heard Kegaya defending herself. He put down Kegaya on the ground and did a back exercise. It seems Kegaya is becoming heavier. Hello, sweetie, how's your day? I greeted my husband with a smile. He seemed tired and distressed about something, I know that look. He's moving his hand to the back of his head when he has a problem he can't solve. A rare thing to see. Could be better, the council is making me have more responsibility. He rolled his eyes, they're promoting me as the new head of the transparency committee. He sounded annoyed with the new position he had. Haruki, if you don't like the assignment why don't you reject it? We both are trying to make free time for Kegai. We've never actually discussed doing it, it's just an unofficial silent agreement we make as a couple. I'm sure the lower house of the council will understand. Unfortunately, I can't, the Hokage is the one who directly ordered me to take the position. At times like this, I regret joining that place. He muttered about something in the end but I couldn't hear it. Does this mean you'll also not play with me again, Papa? Kegaya said with a saddened voice. Haruki, thinking fast, responded quickly. What, of course not. I'll still play with you, Kegaya, Haruki said, trying to fix the situation. I'll tell you what, why don't the three of us go to the park together tomorrow? We what? I've got to finish my work with some pink-haired bastard paperwork next week. I can't abandon it now. Really, Kegaya said with an excited squeal. 
But Haruki the deadline for our client is due next week. They'll demand compensat. My mouth w. As shut by Haruki's two fingers and he looked me in the eyes with his sexy green eyes, taller body, and that insatiable smirk that made my heart flutter like I was 19 again. Uh, what am I talking about again? Shish, our daughter's happiness is more important, I'll be the one who's going to finish it starting tomorrow. I have free time for the next three days. Well in that case, there's nothing to worry about the client demanding compensation. Haruki is unnaturally efficient with the paperwork, I don't know why but for some reason he enjoys doing it. You'll have to also promise me not to experiment with that bank idea of yours, I said with a smirk. Come on honey it's a simple concept. People give me their money, I'll keep them safe, and they can pull out their money in every branch we have. It's a genius revel, and I lost him. I rolled my eyes. My husband is an eccentric person. So tomorrow morning, I cut him off before he could ramble more. Haruki can easily lose focus when he's in that mode. You're just trying to cut me before I can talk more, do you? He looked at me with a deadpan look. What are you talking about honey? I would never do that. Kagaya snickered and I couldn't stop mine too, both of us had the same grin. Yes, honey, we're going out tomorrow. Haruki sighed and gave up, signaling my victory this time. You two are so similar to each other. Don't worry. Papa, I still love you even if you're weird. She said it with such innocence yet the damage has been dealt to Haruki. Haruki looked down into the ground and muttered something I couldn't hear. Papa, you're funny, but it seems Kagaya can hear it. I'm going to my office to sleep, wake me up when it's evening. He walked down and passed my desk muttering something about he's not weird or something. Papa is weird, mama, said Kagaya while looking at me. You have no idea how much of an understatement to describe your father, weird, Kagaya, I said with a smile. Understatement. She looked at me confused. I sighed and picked her up to my lap so she could be on my side while I'm working. Yep, yeah, an understatement. I laughed at Kagaya's mispronunciation and she also laughed with me. Kagaya mama and papa will take me to the park today. I'm so excited. Mama told me to change to wearing a shirt with a lot of woolly on it. She said the woolly one will shoo away the coldy and the sneezy. It's weird how a woolly can shoo away those, is weird but mama said so and I trust mama. Finding my favorite glovey, the white one in the black and white winter clothing and jacket mama gave me last week. Mama said I can't bring Mr. Bunny to the park. He'll get dirty if I carry it. But I don't want to see Mr. Bunny alone so I put Mr. Bunny inside the jacket I wore. Mama. I'm done wearing the shirt with the woolly. Okay honey mama just going to wake up daddy then we'll go. I heard mama outside my room. Go wait at the front door and wear your boots okay tilde. Okay, mama, I'm going to the park, I'm going to the park, with mama tilde and papa tilde. We're going to have so much fun. I almost forgot my white beanie. Papa bought this from me. It's so cool there's a picture of Mr. Bunny on the side. Wearing my shoes I hoped excitedly waiting for mama and papa. Kagaya, what's that in your jacket? I gulped. Nothing. I. Whistled. With all my effort. Young lady. What's inside your jacket, or we're going to have to cancel this trip. Kagaya's eyes widened. Wait. Wait mama I'll tell you. I hurriedly pulled out Mr. Bunny but he was stuck and only the head popped out. It's Mr. Bunny. I don't want him to be lonely inside the house I want to bring him with me to the park. Can I bring him to the park mama? Kagaya looked at her pleadingly. Mama facepalmed and sighed. You'll have to carry him yourself okay? Okay, Mama. Pinky promise. I give her my pinky. Mama smiled. Pinky promise. Mama wrapped her finger and then kissed me on the forehead. But then a bright light hit us. Click Mama and I are looking at Papa who's holding a camera. The photo comes out of it. Papa immediately took it and saw it. Cute. Haruki why are you bringing a camera? Mama asked. To take pictures of course, is there something wrong with me bringing a camera? Papa looked confused. The two of you are too similar. Mama sighed. Make sure not to lose it again. Papa replied with a thumbs up. Don't worry I'm not going to lose it again. Mama just stared at Papa for a minute. I promised. Pinky promise. I extended my pinky. Pinky promise. Now, why don't we go to the park yip, yip. Hooray. Yip, yip. Papa nudged Mama. Hooray. Ori. Come on darling, have some spirit said, 
Papa, whatever, let's just go. Mama sounded tired so I grabbed her hand while Papa grabbed mine. The outside is so cold there's a weird cloud coming out of my mouth every time I breathe in and out it's like a puffy cloud that comes out of my mouth. So cool, Mama, Papa, and I are walking through a crowd of people buying their food. Mama called the place the village market with so many people, there's even a wrinkled lady that looked super old. Kagai are you having trouble breathing sweetie? Said, Mama, for some reason looking at the crowd and me. You don't like the crowd. No Mama there's this weird cloud when I suck and whoosh with my mouth it's so cool. How can my mouth produce clouds? Am I a ninja? Mama, I'm a ninja, look. Kagaya breathes in and out multiple times. Now Kagaya, first of all, you're not going to become a ninja, and second of all, stop doing it, if not there's going to be giant spiders hopping inside your mouth. Papa is using his hand to imitate a spider. I hid my face in Mama's skirt. Haruki, don't do that, you'll scare the girl. Mama said, I was just having fun, Papa said, having a weary smile. So Kagaya, what would you like to do today at the park? I want to find a friend. I'm sure you'll find one, Kagaya said papa while messing with my hair the three of us stopped when we saw the majority of the village market was painted orange colors the other villagers are angered and are saying something but mama put her hand in my ears i can't hear what they're talking about it's unfair i want to hear it too why does mama have to cover my ears uh what happened papa said dumbfoundedly why is the market colored orange Papa's question is immediately answered when a blonde boy standing from one of the highest buildings in the market holding orange paint with a smear of the same color on his face. He's wearing a black shirt with a red whirlpool and white shorts. Sporting a giant grin he looked at us with a smug face as if saying this is his victory. He felt familiar. Ha, huh, serves you right, that's what happens when you mess with Naruto Uzumaki you know. The villagers anger turned to outrage when the blonde boy appeared some even threw water bottles and sandals at him. All in all it looks really fun. The boy showed his tongue mockingly and leapt from roof to roof disappearing from view. So it's Naruto huh? Mama said with a sigh. How would both of them react if they knew how naughty he is? Both of them would be so proud, especially her, Papa said with fake tears. Oh how wonderfully he has grown into. Mama glared at Papa, Papa immediately waved his hand diffusely. Honey I'm joking mostly. Do you know him, Papa? Both of them looked at me and smiled. No, I don't know him that well, Kagaya. But I hope you can be friends with him in the future. Papa said with a smile. Friend. I smiled. Friend. Naruto. This is the greatest prank ever. I left the scene of the crime with a definite style. Those people from the market shouldn't have rejected me from buying ramen. No one rejects me from buying ramen. Naruto. I stopped at my track after hearing a familiar voice. Looking behind me I see a grey-haired man in his early twenties staring at me even if he's wearing a mask. What have you done this time? Nothing. I whistled with no effort. Naruto, I know you're lying. Said the masked person. Why did you do it? It's true Inu Nisan I didn't do anything wrong. The man's stares intensify even if he's wearing a mask. He always sees through my lies with ease. One inch. Two inches, they're being mean again. The man stopped counting. Didn't the Hokage tell you not to prank them in response? Said Nisan. He did but why should I listen to it? He did. But they're the ones who started it. I whimper in pain as Nisan's head chopped my head. He always does this when he thinks I'm wrong. That still doesn't validate your reasoning to paint half the village market in orange. Listen Naruto I know that what they've done to you is wrong, but why should you give them more reason to hate you him? Said Nisan, why should I cater to their image of me when they didn't give me a reason why they hated me in the first place? Those villagers hated me, why should I care what they think of me? When I become Hokage I'll show them all wr. I felt a flick on my forehead. What was that for? You're talking loudly and mumbling again. It's not proper when talking to someone, mostly. He dozed off thinking about something. Hypocrite. You should clear your mind, Naruto. It's not healthy for your mind if you are thinking like this. Find some friends or something. Is he for real? Me a fucking village pariah, trying to find friends inside a village that hates me for no reason besides existing from the start. Is he crazy? 
I've tried that already but it's not going to work. I grit my teeth. You know how they'll react if I try to approach them. They'll avoid me like I'm stale ramen. I know but that doesn't mean you should give up finding a friend. Said Nissan trying to act wisely. You're saying it like you know how to make me find friends. Do you have a plan? I asked him. No, I hate this guy, only you can decide how to find them yourself. But I do know a starting point for you. And that is, I raised my eyebrows. The park. He said it with such confidence that he was right. No, I've tried it there. Not going to work. Those people avoid me like I'm some monster. Do you have a plan besides mine? He flicked my forehead again. No, wiped my forehead again. Then shut up, and follow my suggestion you brat. Neeson said, fine, but I'm telling you it's not going to work. I've been there and the reception I've received is predictably predictable. It's going to work if you don't act like an idiot purposely with your pranks. I'm not doing pranks to act like an idiot. You can fool yourself all you want. Boy, but there's no fooling me and the village elders with that act of yours just to find validation. As I said, I don't do it to find validation from those villagers. Don't lie to yourself, Naruto. I know that look, I've seen that look multiple times in my life. What you are doing is so similar to my friend. You said that you don't care about the opinion of the people, yet you are still mad at them for ignoring you. Admit it, Naruto, you want to be acknowledged, you want to find connection and more importantly, you want to be a cage to prove yourself. No human, no matter how young he is, doesn't want validation if he wants to be the leader of the village that hates him. He grabbed his hand on my shoulder. You're smart, smarter than a boy the average age of you. Don't waste it because you're trying to find validation and suppress the thing that bothers you the most by acting like an idiot. He put both of his hands on my face and looked at me through the mask with intensity and endearment. Be yourself and spread your wings as the boy I find talent in. Not the boy I find pity in. Neeson left me veiled inside a white smoke leaving me contemplating his words. Listening to Neeson I made my way to the park, normally walking through the streets of Konoha with the wary in. D hated glare of the villagers. They've never been physical well, some do but they've always, disappeared, being dragged in by mysterious men from the crowd. Instead, most of the time they've just looked at me with hate spreading poisonous words to the ears of everyone they've known including their children about me, making even the children hate me for no reason because of their poison. The worst thing is I've never known why they hated me so much. Since I was born those glares and looks were always present in my life. They say I'm a monster, a plague, a curse, and whatever thing they've spewed in my direction. I've asked everyone I know, Gigi, Nisan, Chuki Oji, the elder, even the one that hated me. They've never answered the reason for all of that unrestrained malice and hatred toward me, avoiding them entirely even. It's frustrating to know that even to whom you have trusted not telling the truth about why my life is so miserable. As I trek my way to the park under the watchful gaze of the villagers. I stopped walking, saw the children playing happily with each other, and was tempted to talk to them. I was stopped when one of them looked at me with disgust and hate. I knew it, it's not going to work. Disappointed. I made my way back to the new apartment Gigi gave me. Only to be stopped when I heard a girl screaming at me. Hey, fearful of the implications I turned my head around preparing for the worse it's not my first rodeo with bullies. The thing I see I was wholly unprepared for. A girl with an eye of white and black, with hair that is whitening from its stems, and wearing what can be described as white and black winter clothing. Is waving at me with a smile on her face. Is that a rabbit hat popping out of her jacket? The girl runs toward me not knowing what to do. I just started still. The girl is in front of me taking deep breaths exhausted because of her enthusiasm. Which is weird why the hell a girl is running toward me with that much excitement is this a prank? Want to be friends? Huh? Did this girl just? You heard me want to be friends. The girl said as if it were the most obvious thing in the world. Pointing at myself. You're talking to me. The girl rolled her eyes. Yes. Are you deaf or something? She sounded annoyed while stomping her feet. No, no I was just. Surprise. This is the first time someone is actively greeting me. Why are you surprised? She asked. Don't you know me? The girl just looked at me confused. No, I've just met you today. Then why is this a prank? There's no way a girl just asked me to become friends with her. 
If you never met me, why in God's name do you want to be my friend? I just want to ask, is there anything wrong about it? She raised her eyebrows. No, there's nothing wrong about it. I was just, I was just. I stuttered and couldn't convey my words. This girl just said she wanted to be friends with me, a stranger, the person the village hated the most and he wanted to be friends with me. The village pariah, why are you crying? She sounded concerned. Huh, I'm crying. I wiped my eyes with my hand, noticing tears on my hand. With more tears dripping to the ground. We've just met and you already cried. What is wrong with you? She put her hand on her shoulder and leaned toward me. Wiping my face I smiled. Nothing. What's your name? Kagaya. Miyatsuko Kagaya yours. Naruto. Uzumaki Naruto. I wiped more of my tears and when I was done wiping them a man just stood there menacingly. I freeze knowing full well what would happen next. What's wrong? I pointed at her back. She turned her head. Papa. Three minute ago Haruki. And just like that my daughter got her first friend. I and Haruna are just observing the interaction between Kagaya and Naruto. He seemed to be surprised by the general positive attitude Kagaya is giving him. What has the village done to him to have warranted such a reaction from that boy? You know there's a B. IG chance that Naruto would become her first crush in the future, right? And just like that my positive mood is ruined. I looked at my wife with a weary smile. Nah, they're going to be best friends, I said weirdly and sounded unsure of myself. Yeah, just like us. Just like us, just like us, just like us, just like us, just like us. An image of a glasses wearing boy being saved from being bullied by a tomboy GF suddenly flooded me. Looking at Kagaya and Naruto again. Suddenly another image but this time an unfamiliar and disgusting scene flooded me. Kagaya what are you writing? I stood at her door while she wrote something. Papa, what are you doing in my room, out. She pushed me out of her room and closed the door with a thump. What was that for? She was 14. Kagaya, where are you going with all of that makeup and pretty dresses? I stood at her door again. Nowhere. She twirled her hair and had red cheeks on her pale skin. She was 16. Papa, this is my boyfriend, Naruto, she said with all smiles. Hello, sir I will guard your daughter in your stead. What Haruki thinks he meant. I'm stealing yo, daughter, old man. With a well-dressed Naruto. Naruto. She was 17. Kagaya, is there something wrong with your leg? You've been walking strangely since yesterday when you helped Naruto with his house and moving his furniture. Is that a bite mark on your neck honey? I was sitting in the kitchen chair holding a newspaper noticing she was strangely glowing on her face. Just wait for the next nine months, okay papa. She smiled and for some reason, Haruna was laughing. She was 19, will you Uzumaki Naruto and Miyatsuko Kegaya be husband and wife? A pastor. We do. Both of them said at the same time and kissed. While just standing in front of it watching it. While others looked happy I was in grief. Strangely other people from across the world come to this wedding, even cages and daimyos. Kegaya is already pregnant with a child before marriage. Father, I'm so happy. She smiled with tears in her eyes wearing a beautiful bride dress. She was 20 a whole sequence of events just flashed through me, each one more horrifying than the other crack my daughter being taken away by some punk dot pregnant before marriage like hell i'm allowing that to happen i ran as fast as i could like a father protecting her daughter from a pedophile a n is this an appropriate joke haruki where are you going haruna yelled about something but at this point i was so consumed by wrath to listen to her naruto papa she blinked what are you doing here i'm sorry sir i shall leave right away I bowed and walked away leaving both of them. Where are you going boy? Holy shit I'm going to die. I didn't tell you to leave. I I I asterisk gulped I assume you want me to leave sir. He inspected my body down to the hair and grabbed me by the shoulders. You're not going to steal my daughter are you? What? What? I blinked. Good. The man nodded approvingly. Papa. What are you doing? Kagaya asked. You said I can be friends with him. He what? Nothing honey I was just trying to confirm that he's not going to steal you. Ha, ha, ha. Come mine and Kagaya intelligent respond. Before Kagaya's father could speak more, 
A flying kick made him fly, landing on the sand with his butt in a higher position. I will not let you ruin our daughter's friendship just because you are afraid to lose her acting like an overprotective father. A woman appeared, she turned to me and apologized. But I didn't say anything to you because I was just thin, Kagaya's father was cut off before he could speak more. Cut the chatter, Haruki. How long do you think I've been married to and know you? I know that look, I'm sorry for my husband's behavior. Come on you, she said while dragging her husband. Is that your parents? I asked her, can you forget that? Shish. He looked so embarrassed. I'll try, fanfiction. Net just in community forum v more out of placed rabbit by IAB anime, Naruto rated. T, English, adventure and romance, Kagayo. Naruto U, words. 56k plus, faves. 166, follows. 189, published. August 19th, 2022 updated. January 6th, 39 chapter 3. The deals out of placed rabbit, divine, large beings speaking, divine, large beings thinking, normal talking, normal thinking, action. Disclaimer. This work is not me trying to offend someone. And Naruto isn't mine. Kakashi thump. Wider your stance, it's too advanced for you to use your variable on the technique. Take that shuriken and start again, I said to a certain blonde boy. He nodded obeying my order. He returned where he left from and started throwing again this time listening to my suggestion. Training ground 3 is peaceful as ever with blah blah you get the idea it's a peaceful evening day with nothing noteworthy to be described besides when I saw a snake being eaten by an eagle. The circle of life is so beautiful remembering that snake made me hopeful for another snake to be taken away by nature. Thump the shuriken hit dead center of the target. The boy, visibly happy, smiled, spotting a big toothy grin. He seemed to improve immediately when I gave him a suggestion. Such potential, such raw and untapped potential. Good, you've done a great job, Naruto. But I can already execute that move when I was younger. Start over again, but this time with your left hand. The boy's smile faded away, once more obeying my command. He is talented but hardly exceptional. There are many in this world both past and present that are exactly like him or more. With discomfort. He started to do the stance again but time using an unfamiliar pose and position, he held his shuriken. He throws the star-like weapon at the target, only to completely miss the target with the weapon landed in the forest behind it. It seems Naruto completely forgot all the things have taught him until this point when adding a new variable. Damn it, he grits his teeth in frustration. You know what to do, find that shuriken before it becomes a has. Hazard to people and animals, I know. You don't have to repeat that order every time I've missed the target. He grumbled. I can only smile seeing the annoyance of my little brother in all but blood. He started to walk to the forest returning minutes after with bushes shaking as a sign. It's like you're purposely barking in the same order to aggravate me. Yes, I purposely used the word bark. He smiled mischievously. I rolled my eyes at the obvious pun. Again, Naruto, whether it's out of mischief or something, I don't know whatever Narutoism thing he'll do to irritate me. I only stare at him confused by the action. We've been doing shuriken training for three days. Uninterrupted. I'm not going to waste most of my day. Waking, sleeping, eating, reading books, and shuriken throwing for the whole week. Teach me something else, Kakashi Nisan. He said loudly. The fact that I'm using most of my free time from Anbu to help you should be enough, you ungrateful brat. I said half annoyed. I am currently wearing my standard Junin uniform and mask, while Naruto is wearing a black shirt with the Uzumaki symbol on the center and white boyish shorts. The fact that you use your free time from Anbu to help me learn stuff I'll learn in the academy later is stupid. He pointed at me, my eyes twitch slightly, while he's right that basic shuriken will be taught in the academy when he enters it in the next six months, that doesn't guarantee that the teacher there will teach him the material properly. I don't trust them with the education of Naruto even if the Hokage assured me. Teach me something cooler, he said with an illusion of a fire in his eyes. The kid is enthusiastic when it comes to learning about becoming a shinobi, a good trait yet there is some downside to it. Well, the downside mainly made me a target of th. is enthusiasm. How many times do I have to tell you the basics must be covered first when it comes to being a ninja? A house will be nothing but stones or wood being stacked at each other without any found. Asian, yeah, yeah, I get it. 
He rolled his eyes. This brat. You and Gigi have told me this multiple times already, it's not like I'm going to forget it. I'm not that bad at remembering things for you to say the same proverb multiple times. It's annoying, Naruto said. Well, maybe I don't have to repeatedly say it if you ever listen to the thing I've suggested to you. I retort back, when has your suggestion ever benefited me? You back yourself to a corner boy. Kegaya, he slightly moved his body to the back and shut his mouth trying to find a comeback. I just stare at him waiting for him to defend himself. Kegaya doesn't count, came his smart response, with a very red face. That's what I thought, I smile smugly with my eyes. Now, do the order I gave you, I said, referencing my previous order he disregarded. No, teach me something cool. He whined. No, please, I'll give you a photo of the women's bathhouse. Fine, I'll teach you something new. I rolled my eyes. This should have been taught at the academy anyway even if it's for Jenin. Yes, he said excitedly. So what are you showing me? Tree walking exercise. I don't know why but the academy never taught the student tree walking even if this is an essential skill a shinobi needs to learn. You're joking, right? No. Stick your foot on a vertical surface and flow your chakra into it and try to hold onto it with chakra alone. That's it. Yep. Not waiting for more questions from Naruto because his reaction is extremely similar to a certain Google wearing boy. I cringe. The memory is still too painful to remember. I stand next to a nearby tree and plant one of my feet. Observe and learn. With each step, Naruto's jaws drop but an excited gleam can be seen. Stopping in the middle of the tree I jump down with grace beside Naruto. Now you try. He nodded in response with a smile closely resembling a smirk he charged at the tree with full speed. Thump, ow. Not even seven meters he has already fallen to the ground. Yet the fact he manages to get a couple of meters is amazing, no, beyond amazing. This is the first time I see the first try to be so successful. That's when I realized Naruto is a monster in the making. And, Nisan, I broke away from my thoughts with a very excited Naruto looking at me. Yes, Naruto, what's my mistake with the exercise? He said, very much still excited. Slow down you need to find the right balance in your chakra to control and manage the right amount of chakra to make it stick to your feet. In other words, don't rush it and find the right balance to expand your chakra. I said to him, and again he nodded in response. He put his left foot very slowly, right foot, left, right, left, right slipping slightly, but managed to hold himself. Before long, he managed to climb the same amount of distance I have when I showed him the exercise. This time it's my turn to be surprised and widen my eyes. Before he can take one more step. Thump he failed. How? Talent. An uncountable amount of talent. I was so close. I'm training a monster in the making. I was wrong. He is more than exceptional. This kind of talent can only be matched by the first Hokage in Madara. He is well above the potential his father has. And that's saying something. The fourth Hokage is a monster on the battlefield, the only ninja alive at that time who can manage to defeat the Nine Tails. Seeing his son surpass him is expected but this much. I fear the enemy he would encounter when he's older. Inu Taiko, a man wearing Anbu gear and a cat mask appeared beside me in a kneeling position. Tenzo. What is it? I never take my line of sight from Naruto as he stands up to look at the newcomer with curiosity. Quote, the Hokage is calling you into his office. Said Tenzo, standing up to see me. What does he want? I asked. I don't know sir, he just told me to call you. Hearing his response I sighed. It seems my precious free time is over. Tenzo hid his face to the left, visibly shaking. Don't laugh, Tenzo. I look at him with disapproving eyes. I'm not laughing sir, he looked at me and coughed. I was just having a sore throat. Yeah sure, tell him I'll arrive in 10 minutes, I look back at Naruto to tell hi WTF is he up to? Is he fighting a fly? Ah, so many mosquitoes. I can't believe this is the future monster on the battlefield I'm training. I'll give Naruto an assignment first. He jumped into the air clapping the mosquito only to see it fly out of his hand. Damn it, sir. What is he doing? Said Tenzo. Narutoism. Now go and tell the Hokage I'm on my way. Tenzo nodded and left the training field with a shunshun. Naruto. What the hell are you doing? I screamed at him. 
the mosquito wouldn't die. Yeah even if he is talented he's still a child. Just forget about the damn mosquito and come here. With one last slap on his own face, he grumbled and made his way to me. What? Someone is in a bad mood. I'm being called by the Hokage, so I'm going to give you an assignment. About that, his face soured a bit, what's wrong? I asked. Well, I promised Kagaya today to play with her. Oh. So, I can't today. Ho ho. I understand, I said looking at him with an eye smile. I get it. Get what? So innocent. Nothing. Say hi to Kagaya for me. Okay. He said with a thumbs up and bolted in the direction of the Miyatsuko's family estate. I feel sorry for representative Miyatsuko. 20 minutes later making my way to the Hokage office the guard on the door already opened the door with a hand salute. I nodded acknowledging him. The Hokage is looking at the statue of his predecessor and successor with melancholy. His one eye darted to me but returned to look at the statue. Kakashi. He said. Sir. Hitaki Kakashi reporting for duty, I said with a salute. The Hokage just put his palm in the air and motioned a dismissing gesture. At ease, Kakashi. Our relationship is developed enough for you to drop the formal act. He made his way to his seat, wearing his hat that was on the table, and lit up his smoking pipe with a minor fire jutsu. What is the progress of Naruto's training Kakashi? He puffs out smoke. Huh, pardon, sir, Naruto's training. I feigned innocence. Yes, I know you've been training him recently, despite my constant suggestion not to associate with him for the child's safety. He glared at me. I hope what you are doing is worth it, Kakashi. Because what you are doing is spooking some of the spies in our ranks. Fortunately, Danzo Root managed to capture them before they passed on the information. So tell me is it worth it? Before I put you on house arrest. He said with a stern voice. Yes, sir. Oh. How so? The Hokage asked. He is more talented than his father. His eyes focused on me and put down his pipe signaling that I have his interest. That's a bold statement you made, Hitaki. You're saying that Naruto Uzumaki has the same amount of talent as Hashirama Senju and Madara Uchiha. He looked at me skeptically. Yes, sir. The Hokage seemed to have lost interest and started to pull out a document and write something. With all due respect sir. I hope you don't call me here just to ask about Naruto's training. He stopped writing and looked at me again. Because this kind of conversation is not your style to be conducted in your office. Sharp as always. You're right I didn't call you here just to ask about Naruto's progress but for you to deal with the consequences of your action. I widen my eyes. Is the truth about Naruto? No. Not yet at least. A group of ninjas from the village the spy originates from is on his way here. We believe that the spy has a secret hid, out around the village. I need you to delay them before they can arrive at that base while Anbu is searching for it. He puffs another smoke. Which village? He throws me a scroll and I unroll it immediately. Odogakur. Why are they here? They are a new village. Why should they antagonize one of the strongest villages in the world? Their actions are unbelievable. What kind of person is arrogant enough to send a ninja from a village newly made to a superpower like Konoha? We don't know their reason either they're being too confident or just foolish. Either way, I want you to take care of it. The Hokage said, Capturer. Don't kill them. If this mission goes south there is a chance that it will be the spark for the fourth shinobi world war if we are not careful. Konoha is not ready, no matter how much Danzo says the opposite. We're still recovering from the attack five years ago, and our forces are still replenishing. Make them at least conscious enough for the possibility of a prisoner's swap in the future. The Hokage said, I'll get my Anbu gear and call my team. I walked my way through the door. No, I need Kakashi, not Inu for this mission. Only to stop midway. Reason, sir. I turned my back again in his direction. We need to show this minor village about their position in the food chain. Right now I need Kakashi, the son of the White Fang the student of one of the strongest cage the world has seen, and the greatest prodigy the village has ever produced. I need Hitaki Kakashi of the Sharingan, the one who's managed to learn a thousand jutsu, and is a cage-level shinobi. He said to me with conviction, I need my successor to show the power Konoha has. And I've told you I'm not going to be that successor. Naruto is going to be your successor, not me but him. I see potential in Naruto. I'm not going to be a roadblock to his ascension. 
And how long do you think that would be 10, 16? The village needs a leader and I'm seeing one right now. He said with a sigh. I'm old Kakashi. There's no guarantee that I will live to the day Naruto becomes Hokage even if I want to. And how do you know that? Call it the instinct of an old man. He said with a chuckle. I'll prepare myself, sir. I continued my way to the door. You can deny it all you want, Kakashi. But when I die, the village is going to see you as its leader. If not, all the things we built we will be destroyed with an EXPL, boom the Hokage stands up in shock. Both I and he look outside the window. Seeing a pillar of white light penetrating the heavens, and a scream, a scream that terrified me. Immediately the Hokage removes his Hokage ceremonial robe revealing the Serutobi traditional combat armor. Kakashi. Lead the QRF force to the village's high-income neighborhood. It seems that is the source of this energy. That's where Naruto is right now with Kegaya and the Miyatsuko family. Hi. I left immediately for the QRF barracks hoping for the best for them. Wait for me Naruto. Kegaya. Kegaya. Naruto. S here. Perking my ear I did a flip as Naruto has taught me to do it and excitedly made my way downstairs. Walk slowly, you're going to break the floorboard. I heard mama scoldingly, but I was too excited to listen to her. When I made my way I saw Naruto with dirty clothing and a face, probably from training, waving at me with a smile. Naruto tilde, I waved back at him. You're here. Hello, Kegaya, come on I am going to show you something. Remember to be back before 6 and don't dirty your shirt again. The dry cleaner lady is mad at you because of how much dirt was on your shirt the last time we gave it to her. Mama said scoldingly. Okay, Mama, I said with a double thumb up. Mama looked at Naruto. I trust you to keep her safe from those kids that's bullying her. Can you do that for me, Naruto? Don't worry ma'am with my ninja awesome super duper power I'll protect Kegaya. Naruto said while moving both of his hands in a chopping mo. Ion. I giggled seeing his funny moves. Good, and Kegaya don't lose your slippers again, you've lost them five times already. It's not my fault the other children are bullying me and Naruto. They deserve a sandal to the face. I'm not mad at you because you threw that sandal at them. Mama is cool, I'm mad at you because you lost your sandals. Mama is really cool, heck yeah, you do, Papa said from the kitchen. Hello, Mr. Haruki. Naruto greeted Papa. Hello, Naruto, Papa said with a cold tone, and Naruto looked sad again. I'll talk to your father later. Now go and have fun. Okay, Naruto let's go. I dragged his hand leading him to the nearest park. When the door was about to shut. Don't forget to bring Naruto for dinner. Haruki, didn't we discuss, the door was shut. I hope dad is okay. So what are you showing me, Naruto? As we walk I look at him with anticipation close to his face. He looks to the side and coughs. Too close. You'll see later it's a surprise. He said, pushing my forehead with his index finger. Ooh, a surprise. I gasped. Are you giving me a present? Because that would be really cool. No, but something cooler. Maybe, said Naruto making a thinking pose. You don't sound so sure, I said to him. Just follow me, okay? I'll guarantee you'll love it. He said optimistically. And if I don't like it, I bend my back forward while walking to look at his face. What do you want? He asked me completely seriously. Whatever order you'll give me I will try my hardest to complete it with the utmost importance, milady. He said with a smirk. I punched him in the side playfully. You're reading too many damn books for a ninja, I muttered low enough so no normal person can hear it. But unfortunately, Naruto is not normal. He's a ninja. That's a weird thing to say to someone who is a total nerd like her father. He retorted. Hey, I have a reason for that. I'm going to continue the family business in the future, so I have to be good with everything academically. While you, you just like to read books because Kakashi Nisan will forbid you from eating ramen. I huff. I didn't do it because of Nisan. He defends himself. Then why? Hum. I. Dot eat. It. Cause. Of. Oh you. He said with a red face and low enough that I can only hear some part of it. That's what I thought. Victory this time haha. He doesn't have a proper retort so this is my victory, but seriously what do you want? He said making the conversation back on track. Ramen. 
Naruto raised one of his eyebrows upon hearing my request. Ramen, isn't your favorite food mochi? Naruto said, I like to see the way you eat, I said with a grin. It's cute. He looked away again. He immediately grabbed one of my hands and led the way to the park. Come on, follow me. Now I don't know whether I should lose on purpose or not. Naruto said as Naruto dragged me, people started to be heard, their gaze tells us their hatred. With each step, more villagers see us with curiosity and worry. With each step, my hold on Naruto tightens. We arrived at the park. Its name is Senju Park, a memorial for the Senju clan who voluntarily disbanded their clan in the name of village unity. There, he pointed at a tree. Observe, he said with a grin. Wait, wait, wait what are you going to show me? I asked him. Nisan just showed me an awesome exercise. What? Hataki-san already taught you a chakra-based move. I asked, not believing him. How did you convince him to teach you? Didn't he refuse you the last time you asked him? I have my ways. He said smugly. You bribe him with a porn book don't you? He didn't look at my face. Unbelievable. You want to see it or not? He said while pointing at me because if you have a better idea I'll follow you, but I extremely doubt that you'll find some, shut up and just do it already. I shouted at him, fine, without a word, he put one of his feet on the tree. What are you doing? He ignored me and put his other foot on the tree. Naruto, you're sticking on the tree. He climbed again to the highest point of the tree, and jumped with a practiced backflip at my side. I told you it's going to be cool. He said with a grin. Teach me, no, came his direct response. Teach me, no, why, your dad is going to kill me if I teach you. He's already mad at me for teaching you to backflip. Besides, I can't teach you, you haven't unlocked your chakra. That's a good point, then teach me how to unlock my chakra, I said to him. Didn't you listen to me about your dad? Naruto said with raised eyebrows. I'll deal with papa myself, I said immediately. He sighed visibly conflicted. Fine, I'll teach you. If Mr. Haruki is angry with me, it's your fault. Deal. He concedes. Deal. Okay, how do I unlock my chakra? I asked him. Give me your hands. I give him both. Damn just one of them Kagaya. He holds the palm of my hand putting his index finger in the middle. This is not usually how we do it as I was encouraged to find the chakra I have myself, but since you're not a ninja we can use a different and easier method. What's wrong with the normal method? I asked him. Too long, came his response. We'll be here for two hours if we use the normal method. That is too long. So, what's next? I'm going to infuse some of my chakra, try to detect them, and try to replicate the same sensation. He said. Are you ready? I nodded and a strange feeling could be felt on my hands. It's warm. Kegaya, you are the servant of the vine, re. Huh. Kagaya focus, said Naruto, Yi yeah, right, what was that? Dismissing it, I try to concentrate on unlocking my chakra. I'm proud of you, Uter you been show. Headache the image is static yet tells so much. An old man holding my cheeks with an endearing gaze. There's something wrong with him, he's not human. Kagaya, run, arc. Fire surround people with pale skin and white eyes descend from the sky killing the old man. Run lit. Girl, we'll find you eventually. The man said with a maniacal smile. The day of the thousand century of peace is over. What's happening? My hand started to glow. I looked at Naruto and saw him screaming at me. Kag, wake up. His eyes contract in horror. Guya your hair. I can't hear. You. A woman is holding and hugging me while crying. I'm sorry Kagaya. I'm so sorry. Hold this dearly. It will save you. A seed. I love you said the woman before she pushed me into an abyss of empty space. I tried to reach her but a spear made out of bones pierced her. The last thing I see is a being that killed the woman gazing at me with cold eyes. Find her. Ah, a gust of wind propelled everyone that surrounded me as objects moved with force. I started to feel something burning at the center of my forehead I can see the sky with it kneeling I look up to see a beam of light coming out of me. What am I? The world went dark Kakashi, there's someone here. I perked my ears hearing the Anbu. It's the Jinchuriki and an alien. Uh, step aside, I told him. Trying to see this alien I widened my eyes. Kagaya, 
Her hair has all turned into white and a small horn has grown. Take both of them to the hospital, and tell Representative Haruki to go to the hospital, that's his daughter. The Anbu saluted and disappeared. What the hell is happening? Haruki, out of my way. I pushed a man, and Haruna followed behind me while we made our way to the ICU room. 416, 416, 416, where's 416? I grabbed one of the nurses and she pointed at the left corridor. Thank you, I said to her, turning into the corridor in search one by one of the signs hanging in front of the doors. Haruhi, that one, Haruna pointed at one of the doors. In front of it, I can see Anbu agents guarding it. We can't let you in sir, said one of the agents. Plain mask, my daughter is inside, let me through. I'm sorry we can't, it's a direct order from the Hokage. The Anbu said, and why would the Hokage forbid a parent's child to see his own daughter? Feels suspiciously out of character for him. I said with a glare. That's not your concern, citizen. His tone changed. Haruki, there's something wrong. She whispered in my ears. Hiruzen Sama would never do this. She holds my hands tightly. And why would both of them can't see their daughter? A man wearing a white robe suddenly appeared from the dark part of the corridor. Ah I should have known, he chuckled. Did Danzo do this? The Anbu didn't react even if he was directly glared at by the most powerful man in the village. Disperse, and tell Danzo to remember about our agreement. The Anbu hearing the Hokage's order dissipates into the air without any trace. They just disappeared. I'm sorry about that Representative Haruki, it seems even if I've held most of the intrigue involving your daughter, there's still some that escaped my hand. The Hokage said with regret. My daughter is being used as INTR, the Hokage hand stopped me from speaking more with a sign. We can talk about this later. There's a more pressing matter. I widened my eyes in realization. Not waiting any longer, I immediately opened the door to see Kagaya in bed. Her appearance has completely changed. White horns, his hair has completely changed color before there's still black but now it's completely white. Papa, Mama, Kagaya said weakly. Her eyes half awake. Kegaya, oh sweetheart what happened to you? Haruna immediately kneeled beside Kegaya's bed and held her left hand with both of her hands. Am I a monster? My heart skipped a beat. No, no, you're not, you're not a monster, you're my daughter, okay Kegaya. Haruna said, consoling her. Kegaya nodded her head and looked up to the ceiling. What happened to her? Haruna said, is Naruto okay? He's fine. Naruto is already awake, he has told us everything that has happened. The Hokage looked at me. Haruki, come with me. He goes outside. I followed him before I exited the door. I looked again at Haruna, eye to eye. For a few seconds, we just stare at each other and she just signs with her head for me to follow the Hokage. What took you so long? The old man said, having a conversation with my wife. So why did we have to go outside, Hokage-sama? I asked him, what I'm about to tell you is the secret of the highest order if you ever disclosed it, you know what will happen. I gulped hearing the Hokage warning. I understand, sir, I said, trying to sound confident. Good. Five years ago, precisely five years and four months after the Kyubi attacked Konoha, the fourth Hokage Minato sealed it inside. His own child I know. I blurted unconsciously, I'm surprised you've already known Naruto's true parentage. Many people haven't realized it, even if he's the mirror image of Kashina but with Minato's hair and eyes. Said the Hokage, it seems what Minato said about you is true. It's not that hard sir. People just don't want to believe it when they see it. So they created conspiracy theories about why Naruto looked so similar to the fourth Hokage. From Genjutsu to the most ridiculous shape shifting after eating the fourth Hokage baby son. That and they just don't care about Naruto being the son of Minato. The old man nodded and smiled. If only you wanted to be a ninja Haruki. The village desperately needs an intelligent man like you. The Hokage's smile fades away and turns serious again. But there's something else that has happened besides the Kyubi attack five years ago. My eyes widened. The ball of light on top of the Hokage's statues. But you said it was another attack that was teleported by Minato. That's the official story but when investigating it further to find answers to the question of what happened. You find more questions, I said before him. He nodded. 
When the Hyuga clan reported to us that the ball of light contained the chalk, Ra of Nine Bijus, an alarm bell was sounded to all the departments that were investigating the incidents. You remember it didn't you when the Hyuga clan voiced their concern. The Hokage said questioningly, Yes sir, I immediately didn't think about the subject after you said it was classified. Good man, but that's not where the story ends. Some people from the Hyuga and even censors from the older generation said that the ball of light felt like a chakra of an Uchiha and the Senju clan was mixed. Specifically Madara Uchiha and Senju Hashirama. Huh what that's, but that's impossible, are you sure? I would never forget the feeling of the chakra those two monsters had. Said the Hokage, why are you telling me this? Instead of answering, the Hokage continued to speak. When the ball of light dissipates some people noted that the chakra traveled to the hospital. No, and we suspect that Kagaya. No, have absorbed all of that chakra. Tears come pouring through. I tried to hold it with my hands but it proved useless. Why now? Why did she have to react badly now? We've been there all her life. Why now? Kagaya tried to unlock her chakra with the help of Naruto. Why would Kagaya want to unlock her chakra? Kagaya wants to learn the tree climbing exercise, Naruto refused because she hasn't unlocked her chakra and doesn't want to invoke your ire. The Hokage took a deep breath. Usually children unlock their chakra by meditating but because Kagaya is not a ninja Naruto opted to use the faster way by channeling his chakra into her body. We suspect that Naruto's current status triggered something inside her. I grit my teeth, this is too much of a coincidence. Don't blame Naruto Haruki. He doesn't know why it happened, he's still a boy. I'm not blaming Naruto sir. I understand the circumstances he has. I was just mad at the pure chance of this happening. The Hokage nodded in understanding. I'll tell Naruto that you're not mad at him. That poor boy must be worried and think this is all his fault. Combined with my attitude towards him. No, I'll talk to Naruto myself. It's partially my fault that it happened. I sighed. I was too hard on him because of my paranoia as a father. The Hokage laughed hearing my reason. They're still too young, Haruki. It's too soon to imagine them getting married. I cringed at the mental image. It's too soon to be protective because of your daughter's love life. The Hokage seemed to think about something and chuckled. I know sir, but I just have this nagging feeling. Just remember not to let that nagging feeling control you. He advised me with a grandfatherly smile. You should instead protect your daughter from the snakes inside Konoha. What do you mean sir? There's some element inside the village that wants to turn you, daughter, into a weapon. The Anbu with the blank face mask. Who sent them after my daughter? I asked angrily. I can't tell you that, Haruki. He has quite a lot of political support inside the village. He said stoically. The only reason why your daughter hasn't been kidnapped yet is because of your high ranking position inside the village. So how should I protect my daughter? I've hatched a deal with him. Your daughter would be enrolled in the Shinobi Academy four months from now. I also support this deal because of various reasons, one of them being because of your daughter's potential. So in the end, even the Hokage wants to see Kagaya become a weapon but he still has some morality to not kidnap Kagaya outright. If I refuse, I'll never attack your family but he, he would certainly do it. So in the end, this is my only option. I put my hand on my forehead thinking about every possibility I have to at least make this fuck up for my family better. Fine, but I want Naruto to live inside my house, I said with a smirk. The Hokage looked confused, and why is this benefiting you? Kagaya needs a friend to help her, besides I need a protege for my family business. The Hokage blinked in realization. You're trying to groom them to fall in love with each other. If you succeed, your family will be the most influential in the future because of Naruto's status as the Jinchuriki, the fourth Hokage son, and the Uzumaki clan heir. Add to the fact how talented he is as a ninja and a favorite pick as the Hokage from Kakashi who is my successor, myself, and the elders. Well played Mr. Haruki, well played. The Hokage said with a smirk. First you're worried that both of them being together you changed your stance so fast. The Hokage said. You're an interesting person representative Haruki. So we have a deal. I can't believe you have just taken over the conversation in your favor. Yes Mr. Haruki we have a deal. Good, excuse me then I have to tell my wife about this deal. I left the Hokage and made my way inside the room before I opened it. 
and Mr. Haruki. Welcome to the great game. He grabbed my shoulder when passing me. I didn't expect to see your family be this influential so fast. You really are Minato's friend. The Hokage left me with a jutsu I didn't recognize. The great game ha, huh? a grin formed on my face. That sounds fun Haruki standing in front of the door to Naruto's hospital room. I take a deep breath to calm myself. Haruna has agreed with the deal I made with the Hokage, although she's angry that Kagaya has to join the academy. It took some convincing from me for her to agree and a lot of shouting and crying. The next step is to convince Naruto to live with us. When I opened the door I saw Naruto laying on top of the hospital bed, garmented with light blue clothing for patients. He looks lifeless, staring at, something, his mind occupied. This is all my fault, I was too hard on him. Naruto, I greeted him. He didn't respond to me, instead looking downwards in shame. Walking next to him I take a chair next to the windows to sit beside him. Are you okay? He didn't look at me, but that long stare on the bed sheets told me everything I needed to know what he was thinking. It was not your fault. Naruto tightens his bed sheets and grits his teeth. I'm not blaming you, son. His head whipped towards me, glaring daggers as if asking me why. Why? It was my fault that Kagaya was hurt. He said with a shout. You should have hated me by now. You've told me not to teach her anything about becoming a ninja. Why don't you hate me? When he met me in the eyes, I just looked at him blankly with no emotions, taken aback, Naruto looked away from my stare. I know the full story. While I was wrong that it wasn't your fault. It was not you who only contributed to that fault. I've heard that you didn't want to teach Kagaya to unlock her chakra. And because of that, I will not blame you. I put my hand on his shoulder. I know that I've been hard on you. You must think that I hate you because you are friends with Kagaya. Yes, Naruto said weakly. You hate me, don't you? He accused me. I don't hate you Naruto, I've never hated you. Then why would you always look at me like I'm some sort of thief? Naruto slammed his hand on the bed. Why do you look at me with such suspicion? Why do you look at me with an eye full of distrust? Kagaya is my only friend. Why would I want to intentionally hurt her? His voice cracked. That is a normal reaction when a father sees his daughter making friends with a boy. No good father in this world will ignore the friends his children are with. Look at me, it's okay Naruto look at me, I'm not going to hurt you. He turned his body hesitantly and I immediately hugged him. At first, he was trying to struggle but my hold tightened. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. As I hugged him my shirt was drenched with tears. I know that you have a hard life, but instead of being supportive of you, I look at you with suspicion. In the end, I was also crying. Why you really don't hate me? He sounded r, elive, happy, and joyful. Never. I will never hate you Naruto, I can't see both of their eyes when I'm dead if I hate you. You meant it. Thank you. Thank you so much. He hugged me tighter. It's okay. Letting go of the hug, I look at him eye to eye. Naruto, listen, I've made a deal with the Hokage for you to stay with us. He agrees as if now you will become the Miyatsuko family ward. But Gigi never agrees when someone tries to adopt me, he doesn't trust them to protect me. Why would he agree with you? Naruto said, perplexed. When Kagaya transformed she awakened an unknown and massive power. I don't understand the details. What I do know is that many people from inside the village wanted to exploit her power for their gain. The Hokage tried to protect her but his influence can go so far. Naruto widened his eyes in surprise. But he's the Hokage, people listen to his orders. Why would they disobey him? Naruto said with disbelief. A leader can only hold to power if the keys he has to power obey him. These people are the main supporters of the Hokage, he can't just dismiss their demands. I explained to Naruto, the deal I made with Hiruzen Sama is simple, in exchange for Kagaya's protection she will be trained as a shinobi. I can't tell him that the Hokage also supports this. He would lose faith in the old man. If that happened it would complicate things. But Kagaya doesn't want to be a ninja, she wants to continue the Miyatsuko family business. They can't just force her to take a dangerous job. There was a moment of silence. Naruto leaned his back to the white metal headboard of the bed. She should have a peaceful life, not a life filled with violence. It doesn't suit her in any way. He cares about Kagaya. I smile at him. 
Which is why I cut a counter offer with the Hokage for you to live with us. I want you to be there to support her. Kagaya would be alone with no one to relate with. I want you to live with us to help her acclimate to the new environment as a shinobi. Hiruzen Sama may think that I did this to groom him to fall in love with Kagaya, how distasteful. I would never do that to my daughter. Besides, with this, I can help Minato's only son. There is no plot for our family to have more power, but only genuine intention. Would you want to help Kagaya? Naruto. Naruto's face hardened, and his eyes flamed with purpose. I will, and I will do it 1000 times over. He tightens his hand, that's a promise. And I never break my promise. I can see the Kashina side of him. He is really, his mother's son. Always the most determined one of the two. Good, tomorrow I will help you pack your things and move to my house. Standing up I left the room. Then again I'm not complaining if he's going to be my future son-in-law. I thought H with a chuckle. Next, is to find the bastard that is threatening my family. Never underestimate what money and political influence can get you. I will find you, whoever you are. And I'm going to make you pay. Just wait for me, bastard. A. N. Political intrigue baby Wu, you know that mean. Naruto thump. Now that's the last one, Haruki-san put down a box, then stretched his back. He glanced at me and groaned. I've been beaten by a boy younger than me. Kagaya is giggling in her wheelchair. Papa you're so weak. Naruto carried two boxes, while you just carried one. She giggled again. Sometimes Kagaya can be so mean. I bet my money that's because of Ms. Haruna. Being made fun of by my daughter. This world is so cruel. Kagaya rolled her eyes. Mama. Papa is being dramatic again. Kagaya shouted. Wait. Kagaya, don't snitch your father. Haruki-san said with panic. Mama is not home, Papa. A mischievous smile can be seen on her. She learned so fast. Haruki-san muttered something about me being a bad influence on her. Which is 100% true. I put down the last two boxes I carried on the floor. If it will make you better, Haruki-san. I was trained as a ninja by Nisan, and my body has been passively enforced by my chakra. Well, I hope it makes him feel better. And, no, he's still grouchy. It's unfair for you ninjas to have chakra. He muttered again about something, something, an unfair class system. Kagaya's father can be weird sometimes. A genius. Yes, weird, absolutely. Oh shoot, it's 10 am. I have a village record to visit today. Kagaya, would you stay here or go downstairs where you can watch TV? Mr. Haruki asked. I'll stay here with Naruto. Besides, I don't trust his sense of what is orderly and clean. Ouch, that hurts. She can be mean sometimes. I'm here you know, I announce my presence. I don't know if I have to be proud or mad. She just smiled at me and ignored me. Truly she has learned the art of how to become annoying. I shouldn't have taught her that. Now I'm going to suffer the consequences. You reminded me too much of your mother, and not enough of me, Kagaya. Well, I'll get going then. He stood up and started walking outside the room. Don't turn this place into a trash bin, your mother will be furious. His body shakes for a little, and so does Kagaya's. Okay, Papa, said Kagaya. Haruki-san left, leaving only me and Kagaya. The room that the Miyatsuko family gave me is smaller than my previous room, but cleaner. White walls surround me with one bed next to an open window with a cupboard beside it. And a study desk opposite the bed. It's a pretty bare bones room. Time to put on some personality. Well, tomorrow, I opted to just sit on the bed looking at Kagaya. She's sitting in her wheelchair in front of me. Aren't you being lazy, Naruto? Is she going to berate me? I knew this would happen. She is, isn't she? Are you fine, Kagaya? She looked at me sharply. You're trying to diverge the topic of conversation. Well, you're doomed Naruto. No, yes, I laughed. Her sharp look became sharper. But seriously how are you feeling Kagaya? She groaned and slumped her back. If I hear someone say how are you Kagaya? Are you fine Kagaya? Is your feeling okay, Kagaya? I'm going to explode. That's concerning. Want to talk about it? I said with a smirk. Oh, you're a jerk, Naruto. She pouted with her arm crossed looking away from me. Kagaya, you're pouting. I'm not. Yes you are, K. No, N. Yes, K. No, N. Yes, K. 
Okay. No. N. No. Yes. Wait. What? I laughed again. Oh. This is too good. Stop messing around with me. This time she glared at me. But ended up making her like an angry bunny. She is so fun to be bullied. No. Fine. What would it be to stop you from messing around with me for? Momentarily, I cut her off. You're a jerk. She said plainly. I learned from the best of the jerks. Thank you Neeson. While you've never taught me how to, you showed me how to. Fine. Momentarily. She relented, but with a smile adorned on her face. What do you want so you don't annoy me again? Is a simple question okay with you? Sure. She said, if that's fine with you. Are you fine? This time I'm serious and my eyes are focused on her. I'm serious. Are you fine? Wait. You're serious. She said as if not trusting me. That's the question. Yes. I stand up to be close to her and then kneel in front of her while holding her hand. Kagaya seemed surprised by my action. I'm serious. Kagaya. I'm worried about you. They've forced you to become a ninja and I've hurt you. Please tell me, are you fine? You really want to know. She said. I just nodded. She takes a deep breath while looking at me. Well, where do I start? First I'm stuck in a wheelchair for the next two weeks, second when I woke up my father told me to become a ninja to protect me from evil people, and third my appearance changed into a monster. The last one she said with a shout. No, Naruto I'm not fine. Everyone will avoid me now. Tears started to roll on her cheeks. They'll hate me, they'll think of me as some so. RT of demon. They'll hate me, they will despise me. The more she spoke, the more water started to fall down her eyes. I am a monster. Before she said more I stopped her from speaking with my hands. Your hair is beautiful like snow itself. Your eyes are the beautiful moon that sparkles like jewels. Your hair snow white as if you're from heaven themselves. Your skin pale as the furs of rabbit in winter that suited your personality. Miyatsuki Kegaya. I touch her cheeks to wipe off her tears. You are perfect. And nobody can tell me otherwise. But others will not think the same way as you. They will still hate me as a demon. You're not a monster. If you're a monster, I'm also a monster. If they avoid you then fine I'll be there for you, I will be there for you. I'm not going to avoid you Kegaya. If the villagers think the both of us are monsters. Let them think that, we will prove them wrong. And make them eat their own words. I said with a smile. Naruto, aren't you being too dramatic? She said laughing while wiping her tears. Yes, I replied without missing a beat. Thanks, I needed that. She wiped her tears and smiled. Good, it seems that I accidentally made you cry. I stand up. Let's get some mochi. There's one problem, Kegaya said while scratching the back of her hair. I raised one of my eyebrows. And that is, she pointed to her wheelchair with her index finger. Oh, how did Haruki-san carry you to the top floor with the wheelchair? I mean it's heavy if Haruki-san is struggling to just carry one box. I doubt that he can carry Kegaya and a wheelchair at the same time. Papa didn't carry me with my wheelchair. She said plainly. Oh, oh, this is going to be excruciating, why do I have to do it twice? I lament. For if you counted the way back. Don't make it worse Kegaya. Why do you have to tell me that? I lamented more. EP, 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 more hoisting, less talking. I finally groan. Sometimes you're mean. Kegaya, I said to her. Thanks, I learned it from the third best, third. What do you mean by third? Who's the second one? Ah. She's double jabbing me. Come on let's grab some food for you. I picked her up in a princess carry. Onwards peasant. She pointed at the air. Yes ma'am. Haruki. Ah. Representative Miyatsuko. What brings you to the village public record? An old chunin sitting from a desk with papers is looking up at me with a friendly smile. Can I help you in any way? Yes, you can, I answered. Where is the village governmental budget record being kept? Specifically, after the third Hokage was inaugurated, to last year. He seemed perturbed by my question then his smile disappeared and all of that friendliness was gone. What are you asking for this particular piece of information, civilian? The village governmental budget can be only seen by a small specific group of people. The Chunin said with a hardened gaze. I'm the head of the transparency committees. As far as I know, I think I have access to what's happening to the civilian tax money. I shot back at him. The civilian tax money, 
I'm sorry Representative Haruki, but for as long as I can remember the village never levied any tax. Most of our income comes from the mission we take and the Fire Nation's constant revenue stream for us. Again, why should I let you in? This guy is persistent. Tell me where does that revenue from the Fire Nation come from? I asked him. He wants to say something but immediately grits his teeth knowing that he is cornered. I don't have to tell you, do I? In the last budget meeting, if I remember correctly, the Fire Nation contributed 60% of the village revenue for peacetime operations because of the lack of mission demand. Now let me in before it gets ugly. I threatened him. A civilian trying to intimidate a shinobi, how cute, he stands up to look me in the eye trying to intimidate me. How are you going to follow that threat Haruki-san? I smiled. Right into my trap. I think you forgot about something, shinobi. I have one of the richest companies in Konoha and I am the head of the transparency committee. Judging from your age and job you're a chunin without any talent, doing a job you're probably going to do for the rest of your miserable life. Why you? I have more authority. He tried to push back. I can break your bones right now and people won't bat an eye. He grabs my shirt. I wonder who would they listen to, a talentless chunin doing a dead-end job or one of the village's richest and influential men. My smile grows wider when his face turns pale and cowers in fear. I pushed him to the chair he previously sat in, releasing my shirt from his grip. Damn you, take this damn key, he said with spite. Before I could take the keys he grabbed my hand. I know what you're going to do with that damn record, heed my advice, don't look too deep into it, the person you want to find is a dangerous man. That was surprising, it seems all of that bravado was to protect me. But still, how did he know what I'm going to do with the village governmental record? How do you know my intention with it? You're not the last one I tried to stop. He said grimly, listen to me, stop, whatever you're trying to investigate. Stop, before it's too late. I yanked my arm from his grip holding the key with me. Appreciate your concern, but I'm doing this to protect my family. What's your name sir? Kazama, just call me Kazama. I'm not going to tell you my last name since I'm not going to meet you again after this. Now go, dig your own grave. He shooed me away. Thank you, Kazama. How much power does this man have? The Hokage can't touch him and if everyone that tried to investigate him disappeared means that he has his own shinobis that are independent from the Hokage's authority to take them out without putting him into the spotlight. I'm dealing with a very dangerous man. And the Hokage let him have all of this power. Unbelievable. Who is this guy? Why didn't the Hokage remove him before he amassed so much influence? This can only mean one thing. Either he is the real leader of the village or someone close to the third Hokage. At least I've managed to narrow the suspect to the Hokage closest circle, not 300.000 people which is the whole village population. Kazama gave me a very old key that looks like it was made 20 years ago with the number 003. I'm guessing the three stand for the third. How original. Finding the room I unlocked it with some difficulty. When I opened the door I heard a faint strange noise. Beep. Wow. That's not ominous at all. I'm investigating a government conspiracy and I'm hearing strange noises. I hope I'm not going crazy after I'm done with all of this. When I opened the room I found shelves of books that were well maintained. With a chair and a desk. Well, time to do the tedious job of investigative accounting, yeah baby. This is going to be so much fun. Kegaya, Mochi, Mochi, Mochi. I said with a sing-song voice. Naruto is pushing the wheelchair slowly. Come on Naruto, sing it with me. I turned my head to him. He seemed embarrassed by my antics. Do I have to? Yes, I immediately answered him. You have to sing it with me. He sighed and deflated and muttered something about buying the mochi alone. Fine, he relented. Yes, mochi, mochi, mochi. Ha ha ha. Mochi, mochi, mochi. Yeah no, Kagaya this is weird even for me. He stopped singing. What why? Come on I'm bored Naruto, entertain me. By now people are looking at us weirdly. Not the usual gaze but a genuine look of confusion. No, he said simply with one word. Besides we're already here, eh? I looked to my left to see a store called Tomiko Market. It's a store with all kinds of mochi being displaced inside a glass with so many varieties of color, shape, and taste of mochi. Red bean paste bunny shaped. Kegaya what kind of mock? 
Red bean taste bunny shaped. Of course you d. Oh. Kagaya. Naruto. What are you guys doing here? A familiar sound of a girl suddenly came from behind us. What happened to Kagaya? Oh hi Sakura. Sakura is here. I turned my head. I'm here to buy mochi for her. And Kagaya. She asked. She tried to climb a tree but failed miserably. Well, it's technically correct but it's also wrong hey whatever. That doesn't explain her appearance. She looked like a girl wearing a bunny costume. I'll take that as a compliment. I tried to unlock my chakra. Naruto glared at me. What? Do you think I'm going to hide that fact? Hell no. Kagaya unlocked a rare Keke genial or maybe a new one. Naruto shrugged. He bent to my ear and whispered. I thought you wanted to hide the true story. I whispered back. I'm not a coward. That explains some part of it. You should be more careful Kagaya. I'm surprised you let her climb, Naruto. You're usually protective of her. Naruto looked at me with a face saying, I told you so, embarrassed I turned my head again to look at the beautiful tasty mochi. Yeah I did tell her, but someone is just a little hard headed. This is embarrassing, yeah, I can see Kagaya being like that in my head. What do you mean by that? Aren't you Kagaya? Suddenly Sakura's face is in front of me grinning. Shut up. My face heats up in embarrassment. Ow. A head hop greeted Sakura's head. What was that for? Stop messing around with her. My prince. She's a baby that needs special care. And the prince is gone, replaced with an annoying fox. What the hell? Sakura is clearly annoyed by Naruto's actions. You just hit my head to tell a joke. Or angry I don't know I can't see them arguing. I can only see the beautiful mochi. Yes, I bet Naruto is doing a smirk. You and your damn smirk. Yep, yeah, this is getting annoying. I'm hungry. Naruto. The mochi. Buy me the mochi. Alright. Red bean paste and shaped like a bunny got it. Naruto walked into the counter only to be greeted with a bag full of mochi. I haven't ordered anything yet. The girl at the counter is pointing at me. The distance between the glass display and Kagaya is not that far. She's been looking at the mochi for a long time while you two were arguing. Besides, it's her usual order. The lady on the counter said as if it was the most obvious thing ever. My princess. Now get out before you three make another ruckus. The lady at the counter said with a huff and left. A very angry princess. Huh, that was the politest way someone tried to make me go away. Said Naruto. And reasonable, I added to Naruto. And reasonable, Naruto placed the mochi on me and whispered, don't eat them yet. Onto my ear. He then grabbed the handle on my wheelchair preparing to leave the store. Want to go with us, Sakura? She waved her hand in disagreement. My mom told me to buy some books to prepare for the academy. She said I should probably learn all the things I can before entering. That's a good plan. Maybe we're the ones that should follow Sakura, Naruto. I also need books for the academy. I suggested. My preparation to enter the academy is zero. That's a good idea. I already bought it. Well, more given by Nissan. Sure. Let's go. Wait pause. What do you mean entering the academy? She said with genuine surprise. I thought you were going to the civilian school. I have my reasons, I said, trying to settle the matter quickly and without divulging the true reason. And one of them is. Sakura asked. I realized how many evil people are out there. Sakura blinked and then blinked again. That's all I'm going to say. I said to her. Hmm, okay, I don't know how to respond to that. Yeah, I just sounded edgy. Want to go now or? Yeah let's go. Onwards peasant. Ow. What the hell, Naruto. He just hit my head. Dude uncool. I'm just annoyed. Don't question it. Now let's go. Stupid. Cruel Naruto. HMPH. He ignored me. Sasakura. How's your father? I've he art he agreed to fund Kagaya's father's new business venture. How's that been going? Naruto asked Sakura. Hmm. Oh. He's fine over work but fine. He's been cursing your father's name a lot, Kagaya, because of all the work Haruki-san gave him. Not surprising Papa has a very skewed perception of reasonable work. There was this one time Papa has been working for 27 hours straight with no sleep and eating, Mama has to drag him from his office while he was shouting just one more page. Then Mama said something about, sensually frustrated, whatever that meant. And Ino, what's going on with her? Sakura looked at Naruto weirdly. 
There's nothing wrong with Ino, what are you trying to say? Is she in trouble? Sakura sounded confused. This guy, Naruto, I think you worded it wrong, it sounded like Ino is in trouble, I said, trying to clarify the mistake he made by wording the words. I think what Naruto is trying to say is how's Ino? Sakura, I said to her, Ino, oh she's okay her father has been busy though. Something about the failed attempt to kidnap the Hyuga heiress. Sakura said, it sounded better in my head, he said. Of course you did, I'm here you know. Naruto tried to reinstate his presence. As the smart young girl I am, I ignored him. It's so funny to bully him. Sakura, how's Mebuki-san? Oh, mom, she's fine but recently she's mad that dad always comes home la. Unknown in a dark pit surrounded by rusty metal pipes with the sound of drips of water echoing. No sunlight has ever come near to reach it. A man is standing on top of a raised platform with a circling large pool surrounding him. Sir there's another civilian that is trying to uncover us. Anbu knelt to a shadowy man. Kill him. The man simply stated. It's representative, Haruki, sir. The man didn't react to the news. Then observe him. I want to know how far he can light the abyss. And if we can consume him. Make him our ally if you can. Yes sir. The Anbu disappeared leaving the shadowy figure alone. Haruki ha. Huh? I hope this one is a challenge and smart enough when he has lost. Even Minato realized our importance to the village. I wonder, a slight smirk can be faintly seen on him. I don't know how to extend my word so. Here is some omake for you guys it's a one shot I've been making, in progress, one day after every chapter in both of my fanfic is completed so like a side, side hobby. Yeah, it's weird I know. The reason I'm writing fanfic is to improve my English in writing form. The speaking part is mostly safe as I scored 535, I think it's good, on the TOEFL test in my school. I want to be a diplomat the reason why I put so many geopolitics, realpolitik, and economy, is just me practicing in the real world. That's why I want you guys to criticize my writing because I want to improve to serve my country as a diplomat, I'm in high school by the way, so again, please criticize the living hell out of it. Note. This is the last heavily Haruki-focused chapter on the concept of a civilian trying to expose Root and the village is worthy of being a separate story by itself and will diverge the intention from Kagai and Naruto to Haruki Haruna. Reminder. Danzo is a heck more experienced than Haruki. He's also really smart. There's a reason why he is the rival of the second god of Shinobi. So Haruki isn't going to be a Mary Sue political genius. Answering the question from Irina Akashira. If a child has so much talent as a shinobi the village is not authorized to force them as it is contradicting the will of fire. But that doesn't mean they can't be, suggest, heavily to join. Here is some omake onishot prototype. Omake onishot prototype reverence people always argue about how humanity started, is it because of divine intervention or evolution? Wars are waged because of it, and whole people are slaughtered. Yet, no one denied the origin of chakra the origin of unlimited energy that humans have at their disposal. The energy th had made the Turian fear us, the energy that made the Asari look at us with despair, the energy that made the Solarian look at us with envy and jealousy. It all started with Kegaya Otsutsuki, the mother of all chakra, the rabbit goddess, and the world eater. Descended from the heavens itself escaping an enemy that is far stronger than her. She has stolen the divine seed. Some call it a weapon, or food, its origin is mystical or engineered. In the end, it doesn't matter. In the end, a certain species has inherited that power. Her power is from the divine seed which grows into the divine tree that feeds from the life force that latched itself, making it a parasite to the planet it landed. Destroying all life on it, by converting them to pure energy. In return, the one who will eat its fruit will become omnipotent. A planet was chosen and Kagaya followed it to a little blue dot. Earth at first, it was just a seedling barely showing itself to the sun. Years lapse and the tree grows into a sapling. Grow grow. Grow. Without long. The tree pierced the blue sky, its leaves can be used as blankets, and falling trunks waited long before it met the earth. A tree so large that a local fauna, a smart one at that, worship it with reverence. They are called humans. When Kagaya arrives, she finds herself surrounded by an inferior creature. At first, she loathes them, as these humans are blocking her way to picking a certain fruit. Yet that loath turned into interest, 
that interest turned into friendliness, and that friendliness turned into love. Marriage, pregnancy, happiness, all of this makes Kagaya forget her purpose. Kagaya Otsutsuki has fallen in love. To a human, no she has fallen in love with humanity. They are kind, communal, loving, warm, and happy. That love doesn't last long the day she was betrayed, the day her heart broke, the day he learned humanity's dark side. She hated it, in rage, this lowly creature dares to make her cry to threaten her sons. How dare they, she doesn't care anymore, this human she has given compassion, a chance to convince her to abandon her true purpose. So she ate the divine tree, snatching a fanfiction. Net just in community forum v more out of placed rabbit by IAB anime, Naruto rated. T, English, adventure and romance, Kagayo. Naruto U, words. 56k plus, faves. 166, follows. 189, published. August 19, 2022 updated. January 6, 39 chapter 5. Academy out of placed rabbit, divine, large beings speaking, divine, large beings thinking normal talking normal thinking action disclaimer this work is not me trying to offend someone and naruto isn't mine you know what would be cool if i made the final chapter of this fic with naruto killing kagaya but i'm not that cruel even if it's a cool story or am i dumb 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 sfx sound nah i'm not that cruel xd i'm sorry for being late i have midterms at school kagaya do you think Mama would permit the both of us to train with Kakashi-san? I am sitting cross-legged on the floor beside Naruto's bed, while he is reading a book at his study desk half-heartedly listening to me. Probably not. You've just recovered last week, I extremely doubt that Haruna-san would permit you to train with me and Nisan. He flipped another page dividing his attention between reading the book and our conversation. You could at least listen to me properly you know, I said with a sigh. What are you reading anyway? Your father gave it to me. I don't know why he gave me a book about how to be an accountant, though it is an interesting book to read, surprisingly. He flipped another page, and yes I do listen to you properly and I can divide my focus just fine, thank you very much. You're slowly becoming a nerd, Naruto, I said to him. Says the nerd, he refuted my claim. I'm not a nerd, I immediately stood up to defend myself. Kagaya. Do you know how many six-year-olds know the word esoteric? He said plainly as if trying to explain song, Ething to me, is it 5, 10, 100? He flipped another page, is that book really that interesting to him? I've read and I like the book, but I never thought that Naruto would be interested in accounting. Of course, it's under 10, the word esoteric itself is esoteric, there's me of course, you, Sakura, and... Frick I can't think of more names. Glad you understand my point. Now, before you whine at my room again, why don't you just ask Haruna-san for permission, rather than pestering me while I'm studying, you nerd. Naruto said with annoyance. Again I'm not a nerd, me having more advanced words in my vocabulary doesn't mean I'm a nerd. Really, he gave me his full attention with his body fully facing me, and was irritated beyond belief. Example 1. The rant at the playground when the other kids there are talking about which Hokage is better. To be fair, their discussion is only talking about their martial strength and prowess, not the administrative side. I may have ranted too much on the topic, but that doesn't mean I'm a nerd. It means my standard for a good cage is too high for them to comprehend. I refuted his preposterous claim. Talking about topics, example 2, the first topic you talk about when you first meet someone, is the recent village budget. That's all I'm going to say. He turned back to read his book. Well, well, you're dumb, HMPH. That was the only intelligent response I could think of. Very mature Kagaya. Now, why don't you ask Haruna-san permission to train rather than bemoaning and lamenting inside my room? He berates me. Who uses the words bemoaning and lamenting in day-to-day -day life? Yeah, he's becoming a nerd. Sure, why not, I'll do exactly that. I raised my voice a bit. Good, you're finally back on track with the reason why you're here in the first place. He flipped another page. I hate you Naruto, he's so irritating sometimes. Sure I believe that, let me know when Haruna-san gave you her permission, so we can go to the training ground together. My face flushed when he said the word together. Damn it he knew me too well. 
Not wanting to hear more of Naruto jab at me, I left his room with quiet steps and a defeated look. Next time I win the next argument. I'll show him who's the true queen of debating. I searched for mama in the kitchen, TV room, and library. But I can't find her. Then I heard two people discussing something in the guest room. When I peeked my head I saw two people inside the room. Mama is talking to one of her friends. A lady with long black hair and a lollipop symbol on the back of her dark purple blouse. Peeking from the door, I can see Mama and her speaking on a low table opposite each other, sitting on the floor. From my angle, I can see all of Mama's face, but I can't see hers, as it is masked by her long black hair, seeing only the edge of her lips moving as she talks with Mama. This is too much responsibility for me and Haruki, Makoto. Why didn't you put Itachi and Sasuke's inheritance with the village personal asset trust? Mama advised her, it will be much safer that way, why would you want us to be the trustee of your children's future? It doesn't make sense, no shinobi has ever done it, much less with a civilian. I have many reasons, I can't divulge them to you. I don't want your family and Naruto to be dragged into this. The mysterious woman replied, you and Haruki are my only hope. Mama rubbed her head thinking about something then slammed her hand onto the table. I was shocked and my body slightly moved the door. What kind of situation is your family facing right now that you can't even trust the village governing body? Mama clenched her teeth and then made another thinking pose with her head slightly looking down. Is the relationship between the Uchiha clan and the village strained that bad? She waits for the mysterious woman's explanation, but the woman just shakes her head not answering Mama's question. What about? Fugaku, did he agree with this arrangement? Trusting your children's future to someone outside the Uchiha clan? Mama said, we aren't ninjas for God's sake. Fugaku agreed, an outsider that isn't a ninja is precisely what we needed. Just like the outsider from our little conversation. You should come out, child, and introduce yourself. I can see a smile forming on the mysterious woman's lips. You don't want to get in trouble do you? Mama's formerly downward cast head suddenly snapped toward the door I'm peeking from. How did she know I'm here? Feeling embarrassed I opened the door twiddling my toes. I can see Mama let out a tired sigh and the mysterious lady shaking her head in amusement with her hand I presumably think holding her mouth to hold her laughter. Kagaya, didn't I tell you not to eavesdrop on people when they are talking privately? Mama said exasperated. Yes, I replied, looking away from Mama's disappointed glare. How many times did I remind you? Hmm. This time the mysterious lady was shaking uncontrollably. 6. That did it, the mysterious woman let out a short wheeze trying desperately not to laugh. This is embarrassing. Mama sighed again. Well since you're here, why don't you introduce yourself to our guest? The mysterious woman turned her head toward me and smiled. Hello Kagaya, it's been years since the last time we met. Last time I saw you was when you were merely a babe. She's beautiful, I immediately thought. But feeling uncomfortable with her presence and gaze I walked at a fast pace to hide behind Mama's back. Kagaya, don't be shy, come on, introduce yourself. Uh, uh no, sorry Makoto she's usually very lively, and braver when meeting someone her age with an adult it's a different story. It's good that she is wary of adults, a good trait to have. Kagaya don't you want to hear my name? I revealed my head ever so slightly only to stop when I can see her. Your daughter is adorable Haruna. The woman said with a slight giggle and Mama slowly nodded in agreement. My name is Uchiha Makoto, you can call me Aunt Makoto. I didn't reply to her until Mama poked the side of my belly forcing me to not hide behind Mama's back. I jumped with a jolt receiving the ticklish sensation. Kagaya, etiquette, Mama reminded me, and nice to meet you, Aunt Makoto, I bowed. So why are you here young lady, Mama said sweetly. I gulped. I I wanted to ask your permission to train with Naruto. There are some basic things he wanted to teach me. And Kakashi-san is there to help us. I've been trying to catch up with the basics before entering the academy so that when I enter it, I can acclimate to the place much better. That's it. I nodded quickly. Are you sure that you've recovered? I nodded again. You can go, but remember the rules. Back before sunset. Don't talk to strangers, it's okay to beat up people as long as I don't lose my sandals. Aunt Makoto looked at Mama weirdly, but Mama ignored her judging look. Good, off you go. 
I immediately sprint to Naruto's room upstairs. Unknown to Kagaya, you still like to scare the living crap out of the one that you care about, don't you, Haruna, Makoto said with a sigh. I thought you would stop doing that after you married Haruki, after all the torture you put him into. She was quite the bully to Haruki back then. I still wonder how Haruki, a nerd, managed to make a tomboy fall in love with him. Why would you think that? Haruna said as if it was a weird thing to say. Oh, nothing, it was just a presumption. Naruto. Mama said we can go. I push open the door. Naruto is still reading the book Papa gave him. Really? He asked calmly. Yes. I said with excitement. Cool. Let me take my training equipment first. Naruto stands up from his chair, opens a closet, and then takes a brown mini bag with a strap on it. He was about to leave with me, only to check his bag again to check the contents. Can I check? Ninja wires Che, CK. Why does he always do this when we want to play, train or go outside? Double checking or triple checking everything. Hum, I think that's everything, let's go. We need to give you a psychology test, Naruto. It's getting worse. I said plainly to him. This is not the first time. Yeah, you're probably right, but that is next time, today we will train. He said mimicking the way I said yes. Well, that was a 180 change in attitude, where did he get all of that energy? Train. I followed him screaming. K-A-G-U-Y-A, Naruto, stop shouting. We both heard Mama scream angrily. I looked at Naruto and he looked at me. We both nodded to each other and immediately left the house from Naruto's window. Hoping from rooftops to rooftops I struggled to keep up with Naruto as he moved gracefully performing difficult techniques without thinking, showing experience while I had to calculate each step. Naruto noticed this and slowed down so that I could keep pace with him. Struggling to keep up, Kagaya. He asked cheekily. No, I'm perfectly fine. Thank you very much wa a a, ah, ah. I stumbled for a second like i said i'm perfectly fine but recovered quickly sure i believe you he said with a chuckle if you can keep up with me i'll go ahead to the training ground he started to speed up leaving me to dust wait naruto arriving at the training ground i gasped for air as all of that rooftop hopping made me tired and added the unbelievable effort i needed to catch up with naruto you're a meanie naruto i glared at him you said you could keep up with me he tried to defend himself it's your fault for not being honest when you can't keep up. True, but I won't admit that. While I catch my breath, Naruto is looking around the training ground. Where is Nisan? Don't tell me he's lost on the road of life again, Naruto whined. We should have come late, show him his own medicine. He's doing that. I'm going to prank that person, group so hard, face again. I wonder. He muttered something about burning a book. No, I bopped his head. There are things you shouldn't do in life, Naruto. I tried to advise him. But it's hard trying to explain to him between a perfectly good, funny prank and mean ones. But why? All he does is read that stupid book. Besides, you hate that book. He tried to defend himself. Hypocrite. Yes I do, but Kakashi-san seems to put that book very dearly inside his heart. So no, even if that book is distasteful. There is evil and there is evil. Such wisdom from such a young age. The sound of fake tears. I knew there's a reason why you are my favorite insolent child Kagaya. There is evil and there is evil, simply an amazing quote from such a young age. My eyes twitched hearing the familiar sarcastic tone from behind. Don't patronize me, you pervert. I pointed at him angrily. You're late again, explain yourself, or I'm going to burn that book until it becomes ashes. The man uses a placating hand gesture and smiles with his eyes. Well, that was a full 180. I wasn't late, the Hokage was hounding me about a cranky chair again. Anyway, let's do some basic training. That doesn't explain anything at all. Now, I have two different schedules for both of you. First of all, Naruto. 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, and 10 kilometers of running. Kegaya, do one-tenth of Naruto's exercises. Why do I have to do one-tenth of Naruto's training? I can do more than that. Just because I'm new to this shinobi thing doesn't mean I can't handle it. This time it was Naruto's turn to bop my head with more force than mine. You're still an amateur, even if you have awakened ancient powers or keke genke that are overpowered. 
your muscles are going to be strained because you've never exercised as heavily as I do. He explained it to me. That. One miso ramen, he said laconically. Deal. I replied with a grin. 30 minutes later. This is hell. My muscles feel strained. My lungs feel like they. They just been beaten to death by punches of air. And my movement feels lethargic. With my body bathed by sweat. Overall. I felt like my body was drained to death. I should have exercised more. I told you, but you didn't listen. You just can't take a no for an answer to UK Gaia, he said with a sigh. I expect our deal to be fulfilled by today or I'm going to write this in your debt journal. He said with a smirk. Aw oh, frick, my net income is going to take a toll this month. Now that both of you have warmed up, K Gaia, can I ask you some questions before we move on to the next exercise? Kakashi-san asked me, wait, are you going to ask her the same question that you gave me when you first wanted to train me? Naruto cut me in before I could speak Kakashi in typical fashion, just ignored him. Sure what's the question? Kakashi pulled out a shuriken from his pouch and gave it to me. Has Naruto ever taught you how to throw a shuriken? I nodded. Yeah, only the basics, I replied. Trajectory, wind speed, force, etc. When you throw a shuriken, what's the thought process inside your mind? Do you have multiple thought processes swirling in your mind at the same time or do you have to think about it one at a time? He asked me, at the same time, isn't that normal? Papa also has multiple conclusions when he thinks about something. I mean Naruto is the same as me and Papa. I don't know about Mama, because she didn't like to rant all the time. Kakashi rubbed his eyes hearing my answer. Show me, he instructed me while pointing at the swirly thing on the trees. Hearing his command I threw the shuriken at the three, hitting dead center on the swirly part. Does this ever affect you when you try to focus on one singular object or subject? Kakashi asked me again. At first, yes, but Papa showed me an exercise to calm myself. A sigh of relief can be heard from him. Good, that's one less problem I need to deal with. It seems I'm training two children needing special attention. I need to contact Jiraiya-sama about how he handled Minato-sensei. Wait, isn't Jiraiya the guy that wrote your smut book? Naruto said with distaste. Yes, a master class of a writer. Pervert, but enough of that. How's your progress on finding out what's your keke genke kegaya? Well I can do this, a portal appeared beside me. Putting my hand inside it. I pull out a water bottle. The range is limited and I can only do it with small objects and it's tiring for me to use it. Kakashi-san is looking at me with widened eyes, his covered face as jaw dropped. I can safely say that he is indeed shocked. Naruto. Well, he has seen this so he isn't that surprised. The implication. How did you find out about this? Would you believe me that I got it from a dream? That only made him more confused. It's true since the accident, I've been seeing such vivid dreams that felt so lifelike. A dream. Yes, I replied. I think Nisan's mind is broken, Kegaya. I snorted after hearing Naruto's remark. For a minute Kakashi-san just stood still not doing anything, his mind trying to process the new information and thinking about something. Then suddenly his face paled and turned serious. Whatever you do, never show this power to anyone you don't trust, if the wrong people find out about this, it will be a disaster. Naruto and I were bewildered and taken aback by the serious tone he is using. Gone is the image of an unassuming, lazy man, replaced by a veteran from countless battles. Never have we seen Kakashi-san being this serious. Do you understand? I I understand, I said with nervousness. You promised. Yes, sir. Hearing my response he smiled again. It's scary how easy it is for him to change his attitude. Good, now let's continue our training. No I want to rest. Can we rest for a second? My body felt like it was mushed by a giant boulder. No. In fact, let's add more exercises until we stop in the afternoon. I groaned hearing Kakashi-san respond to my question. He is evil incarnate. Two weeks later Naruto it's morning, the first day for me and Kagaya to enter the academy. The four of us are sitting at the dining table eating breakfast at first, we just eat in silence, enjoying the meal that Haruki and Haruna-san made together. I nervously looked at Haruki and Haruna-san while eating my food slowly. Is there something wrong, Naruto? You've been looking at me and Haruki for some time now, is there something on your mind that you wanted to talk about? Haruna-san asked me with worry. K 
Kagaya perked up listening to the conversation with food full inside her mouth. Are you sure that the two of you will be the ones that will stand in as my parents? Yes, why is that even a question? This time it's Haruki that responded while still eating. I mean, I'm not your son. Haruki-san put down the chopstick in his hand and stopped eating, giving me his full attention. Even if you are not our son, you're our ward. I think standing in as your parent is part of our responsibility. I was about to add my thoughts on that, but Haruki-san stopped me before I could speak. Eat. Don't think about it too much Naruto. He smiled at me. Yes, sir. We continued eating in peace. How's the preparation going for you Kegaya? Kegaya, surprised by the answer, quickly chews her food and swallows it. I think I've prepared everything I need, thanks to a certain guy that likes to check in things that I've checked four times already. Haruna-san giggled knowing who she was referring to. Remind me to go to a specialist with you next week okay Naruto. Haruna-san requested me, yes, ma'am. I think I have OCD Haruki-san, seemingly done eating his food, opens a newspaper reading them, a minute later a scowl can be seen on his face. What's wrong this time Haruki? Haruna-san asked, the daimyo is looking for someone to replace his prime minister. My name keeps appearing on the list of candidates even though I said I don't want the position. Haruna-san seemed surprised by that information. A warning from them. She said with worry, a warning, Haruna-san nodded, they wanted to remove me from the equation, whoever this guy is, he's good, Haruki-san rubbed his eyes, is there something wrong papa, Kegaya asked Haruki-san, there's nothing wrong, Kegaya, there is just this pest papa needs to confront, he gave a reassuring smile to Kegaya, okay, papa, she continued eating but something was clearly in her mind, me, Kegaya, Haruki, and Haruna-san are walking toward the high gate of Konoha's Ninja Academy and can be seen as parents and their children walking in peace and full of anticipation. Some of them look at me with worry, disgust, and fear. But all of that subsided when they saw Haruki-san putting his hand on my head to mess with my hair. Don't be nervous, smile, where's the confident face that you gave me when you made that promise? Hearing his advice, I took a deep breath and calmed myself. Straightening my posture I slap both of my cheeks. That's the spirit. Ah Haruna, Haruki, a raven-haired woman called the four of us with her hand raised to the air. Next to her is what seems like her husband and his two children. Makoto, Haruna-san responded with a wave, both of them embracing each other in a friendly hug, both of them disengaged from each other hugs, and Haruna-san looked at the two boys beside the now newly named Makoto. So this must be Sasuke, my you've grown up since the last time I saw you. The boy stiffed for a reason not knowing how to respond, but as if was trained he immediately bows his head. It's good to meet you, ma'am. The father smiled seeing Sasuke's action. Aren't you a proper fellow, such good manners. Itachi, how's life as a ninja treating you? Haruna-san asked the older of the two brothers. It's been treating me fine, Haruna Obasan. Being called Obasan seems to sullen Haruna's san mood. Wh, why did you stop visiting us? Ugh, the usual. There is too much work to do because of the village reconstruction, we have too many orders that want us to finish that. And there goes Haruna san. Fugaku, Haruki san started the conversation. Haruki, the newly named Fugaku responded. I hear you've been quite busy in recent months with those banks you're opening, I gotta say I'm quite interested. What do you say we discuss them further? Next time, Haruna-san cuts in, he then looks at me and Kegaya, understanding what Haruki-san is trying to say, Fugaku-san nodded. Next time, this evening. This evening, Haruki-san agreed with a nod. Oh, how did I forget, Naruto, you've never met me. I snap back my attention to the conversation Haruna-san is having with Makoto-san. She knelt to me and gave me her hand, signing me to shake it. Hello Naruto. My name is Uchiha Makoto, you can call me Aunt Makoto. She smiled at me, I hesitate for a second then take her offer to shake hands. Hello Aunt Makoto, how do you know my name? She widens her eyes a bit then calms herself. Haruna has told me about you, she said some good things about you. She responded, Haruna talked about me to strangers. Hello, Aunt Makoto, it's n nice to meet you again, Kegaya bowed. Hello. Kegaya, now, why don't the two of you meet my son, 
Sasuke, and his older brother Itachi. Makoto-san offered, I and Kagaya synchronized and turned our heads at both of them. The older one blinked for a second seeing us but then quickly cleared his head and the 12-year-old smiled at the both of us. My name is Uchiha Itachi, just Itachi if you want to call me by name. And this is my younger brother. Nice to meet you, I'm Uchiha Sasuke. Miyatsuko Kegaya and Uzumaki Naruto, Kegaya introduced herself and me before I could introduce myself. She flashed a grin at me. Jerk. Nice to meet both of you Kegaya and Naruto. He said it smoothly almost too smoothly. Aw. Oh, look at them, they're becoming friends just like the three of us planned. Said Makoto-san. Three. Yes, they are, Haruna-san said with a smile. Now why don't the three of you sit on the chair at the main entrance and wait for Hiruzen sama to arrive, okay? Sasuke looked at his mother asking for permission, she nodded. Then he looked at his father with more seriousness on his face, his father looked at his wife then at Sasuke, and nodded. A very nonverbal family, come on you two let's go. Kegaya dragged me to the chair while Sasuke followed behind us. Kegaya I can walk by myself just fine. She did not acknowledge my complaint, instead, kept dragging me. I sighed and looked back at the adults and they were discussing something. Is she, this forceful with people? Sasuke asked. Yeah, but you get used to it. There's Sakura, she said excitedly. Who's Sakura? Sasuke asked again. One of our friends, I answered. He nodded satisfied with my answer. Sakura is talking with Ino and there's Shikamaru and Choji but they seem to be just eating chips peacefully. Ino noticed us and pointed us to Sakura who turned her head around to look at us. She smiled and looked confused when she saw Sasuke looking away from view. Strangely, Ino is doing the same thing. Hey, guys, I cut Kagaya before she could speak. She glared at me, revenge. Hi, and Naruto, hi Kagaya who's your friend? Ino asked. Oh him. I pointed at Sasuke then nudged him to introduce himself. Uchiha Sasuke, nice to meet the four of you. Sasuke, the one that is half awake is Shikamaru, the one that is big boned is Choji, he raised an eyebrow at the word big bone but chose not to ask the reason. The one with blonde hair is Ino and the pink one is Sakura. For some reason, all four of them glared at me. Kagaya just face palmed for some reason. What did I do wrong? Naruto. Don't be rude when you're introducing someone. Kagaya is lecturing me. Did I do something wrong? Forget about it. The Hokage is her. E. Let's just sit in our chairs. Gigi appeared beside a pre-made podium with a smokeless shunshun. Wearing his traditional Hokage look. He surveyed us by looking from left to right seemingly satisfied with something. Stepping onto the podium he grabbed the handle and started to speak. Greetings to all that are present here. I am extremely privileged to address the 79th batch of Konoha Ninja Academy. It warms my heart to see the enthusiasm of all the younger generations that want to defend and serve their homeland. The speech lasted for 20 minutes. When the speech was done the teacher divided us into groups. Strangely in my class, there is a suspicious amount of clan kids that joined us. Is this some sort of special class? Kagaya picked our place to sit in the middle row back of the class Sasuke followed us like a lost duckling, hee hee hair, not knowing where to sit. Ino, Sakura, and a random girl sitting in front of us that has short black hair. While Choji and Shikamaru are sitting on the left of us sitting with another kid with red markings on his cheeks. Kagaya is talking to Sakura and Ino, Sasuke is looking for an escape route, he's trained, while Choji is eating his chips and offering them to the sleepy Nara. The door opened revealing a man wearing a chunin vest with a ponytail and a scar line on his nose behind him is another chunin with silver blue hair. Both of them stand in the middle of the class while one is smiling and the other puts a blank face. My name is Yumino Aruka and this is my assistant Mizuki, welcome to the academy.